U.S. sanctions. The If No Deal is reached, it will be seen by many as a failure on the Obama administration's part. Success could mean stability in the Middle East and a shrinking nuclear missile threat. Spain's three new anti-terror laws are not scheduled to go into effect until July 1. But they already have human rights groups up in arms. The Penal Code, the new anti-terror law, and the Law on Citizen Safety were recently approved by the Spanish Congress. Critics say the laws are an attack on freedom of expression online and in the streets. The Citizen Safety Law, nicknamed the Gag Law, will criminalize public protests, free speech, freedom of the press, and filming police. The law has also legalized blacklists for protesters, activists, and press, as well as random identity checks. On the internet, the gag law will criminalize tweets calling for protests or rallies. The Liberty Beat is brought to you by Midas Resources Incorporated, helping clients convert their paper 401ks and IRAs to solid gold and silver. Get your 10 reasons book free by calling 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. This is the Liberty Beat for Tuesday, March 31st, 2015. I'm Brian Hagen reporting, reminding you spread liberty with a smile. I mean, it's just so hard to believe that it's really all gone. It was in this living room three weeks ago that the Talbot family discovered their DVR had suddenly and inexplicably crashed, deleting more than five years worth of recorded live events and miniseries. I keep having flashbacks to that day, to that moment when I realized everything was gone. You know, you hear stories about people who mismanage their device settings, but you never really think it could happen to you. Honestly, it feels like some sort of a dream, like, when I wake up, I'll be able to just go downstairs, turn on the TV, and all the episodes will be there again, as if nothing had ever happened. Friends and family of the Talbots have pledged their support, organizing DVD donations and offering passwords to online streaming services while the family struggles to move on. We know that we'll never be able to replace all the hours of programming that we had, but I think in the end, we'll be just fine. As long as we have our five seasons of Seinfeld on DVD. This is the Onion News Network. Free Talk Live, 855-450 free. That's 855-450-3733. You can call in and talk about whatever is on your mind. It's Mark with you. And Johnson. 855-450-FREE. Uh, you know, um, recently, Barack Obama suggested that we all be forced to vote. And there is an interesting article that I saw written by Sheldon Richman, who is, you know, one of the big names in the liberty movement. Uh, he's a prolific writer. And I got on the phone with him and asked him if he'd talk to us about it. Sheldon, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Loud and clear. Excellent. So tell us what the advantages are of Barack Obama forcing us to vote. <laughs> uh, I can't think of any. <laughs> okay, what interview. are the disadvantages? <laughs> uh, well, uh, just to put it in some context, I, I think this was kind of a throwaway line at a town meeting. He hasn't formally proposed this. Uh, to my knowledge, there's no right. in Congress. It's not really part of his program. He, he just does says speak. Like, to the hubris of these people um, and, you know, what it what it in, a, in, a, in a, the perfect world, what they would like us to do. Yeah, he said it might be a good idea. So it tells us something about him that he thinks that might be a good idea. Uh, so, uh, as I say in the article, I'm not really surprised by that. Uh, you know, government is all about uh, force yep. and violence. Politicians love that stuff and they want you to endorse so, their violence. The fact that he want to would you know the fact that he thinks it might be a nice idea to punish people if they don't vote just tells me a lot about him and, and the system and who and who prospers under that system uh, you know the idea that in a, in a you know if, if the country is, is called a free country now we we know it's not it's hardly any it's any, anything but a fully free country but um, but, but to people f call it that they think of it that way so in a theoretically free country the idea that you could get punished for not voting. In other words, they would take some of your money away from you. And if you didn't surrender the money, they would come after you and, you know, maybe put you in prison. And if you resisted, they might even, they would use physical force against you because you're not allowed to resist, resist arrest. Right. Right. Uh, the fact that, the fact that they think that's that Obama and others think that's a, that would be a good idea in what they call a free country 
just shows you how that they don't understand anything about freedom. I mean, why would you punish people for not voting? Yeah, uh, so often vote, it gets people propose these things and they forget what the other end of government is, and government is always. A gun, right? So many people forget what the other gun end of government is. I mean, it's like most people now, I don't think that when I have these conversations with people that most people, that it's a majority of people, when you start saying like, oh, well, they'll come and shoot you, you know, or, or this could end in this this fashion, they, they just always come up with this that won't happen that's not what happens they yeah. fine you and it's like and you right, have because well, people will build bend to their will i'd much rather pay a 50 dollar fine than than be killed on the way to jail yeah and they don't they don't ever get the like well what if you don't pay the fine it's like it it's like it doesn't cross people's minds ever right oh you'll just be locked in a cage inside the velvet glove if it's even velvet anymore is a, is a, an iron fist, and right ultimately the the government is going to enforce its decrees, and uh, and if you resist, you know, of course you'll be made out to be the bad person because you've resisted a lawful authority. Right. Uh, law. It's certainly lawful in the narrow uh, positive sense. It's not lawful in the sense of natural law. It's contrary to natural law. But most people will say, well, he shouldn't have resisted. I mean, look at some look at some of these cases with the police. Uh, these days, they say, well, if he had uh, only uh, not resisted arrest and laid on the ground and let himself be handcuffed, he'd be alive today. Well, so that means basically the police and the government officials can do whatever they want to us. And if anything happens, it's our fault because we didn't comply and go docile. What do you think the most uh, dangerous, I mean, dangerous thing about uh, forcing people to vote is? Uh, well, dangerous is that you know someone who decides he doesn't want to pay the fine could could uh, could well, end up yes. getting uh, beaten or worse. Um, it's just it's just the you know it's the same old principle that uh, we're heading to the time when you know everything that's not forbidden will be required. That's that old line about uh, you know there'll be two kinds of things in the world, two kinds of actions: those that you're not allowed to perform and those that you must perform. In other words, there'll be no zone no zone of freedom at all. Uh, I mean. What's, first of all, it also makes a mockery of the idea that voting is a right. Now, they, they like to say voting is a right. I have a lot, a lot of thoughts about that, but, um, but let's, just, let's take their word for it. It's a right. Since when do you have an obligation to exercise a right? I have a car. That means I have a right to drive it. Am I obligated to drive it? Of course not. It, that conflicts with the idea of a right. A right means I decide whether I want to exercise it or not. Yeah, so, that's so the right to speech. Right to, how can you have a compulsory right to vote? It's total contradiction, right? You have a right to free speech. It doesn't mean you have to speak. You can remain silent, uh, yeah. you know, just walk around and never utter uh, any kind of opinion. Are you, are you uh, uh, not, uh, should you get punished for not exercising your right of free speech? No, people would laugh at you if you said that. So how can you have a, how can there be an obligation to exercise the right to vote? The other thing is, you know, we can, we could talk all night about voting. You know, they always talk about how voting is the most sacred right. It makes, you know, every vote counts. You make a difference. Well, it's hardly the most sacred right. If it, even if it's a right, it's I, I, I can name uh, the right not to be aggressed against is much more sacred than the than the so-called right to vote. The other thing is, what's the right to vote even worth? You get one vote out of what, hundreds of thousands in some in a lot of cases, millions in, in a presidential election. Uh, the chances of uh, of a tie and you're breaking a tie are tiny, unless you live in a really small town. You're, you you have a higher chance of getting hit by a car on the way to the polls than of uh, determining the outcome of the election. So what is this right even worth if it, if it is a right? So the whole, the whole thing just shows the bankruptcy of the system. I like to say that uh, you're lucky if your vote counts. You could be almost certain that it will not matter. Um, and, you know, some votes count. I think that uh, some do. But we've certainly seen election rigging, and it's difficult to even know with these, uh, these machines the way that they're, um, you know, they're, they're counting people's votes. And then, of course, gerrymandering put into the effect. They draw these, uh, they, they'll draw these districts for the very purpose of uh, of seeing of knowing what the outcome is going to be anyway so uh, i mean ultimately it's unlikely that it, it well i guess you're lucky if your vote counts and it's uh you you, you know highly well, unlikely that it'll matter right but even assuming away those problems of uh you know machines that are rigged or uh, gerrymandering or any any corruption assume assume away what we call corruption just take a totally honest election uh in any sizable jurisdiction uh, it's a matter of arithmetic that no yeah. one vote is very likely. I mean, the, you know, you can go online and, and look this up and find the odds. People have computed the odds of, of what the chances are 
that there's a, that you'll be a tiebreaker, that there'll be a tie, and therefore you, and that therefore you could break the tie. I've lived through, I've lived through many elections. I can say with absolute certainty that if on each of those election days I had done something other than I did, nothing would have changed. Yeah. Okay. The same people would have been elected. I know this for a fact. It's arithmetic. This is not ideology. This well, is arithmetic. True. It's, it's, it's not true of, where I live uh, because I, I, there have been elections where it's like one vote really would made, have made a difference. But it is extraordinarily rare, and I don't think it's mattered in any of the presidential elections. And you have to consider that there's probably been more than a thousand of them since they're all for electoral, uh, you know, different. They're yeah. divided by states and electoral um, right. regions and 50, stuff. 50 different elections these days. That's true. Uh, well, you'd have to live in a pretty small jurisdiction for there to be, you know, a significant chance of a tie. Yep. Uh, you know, the average uh, congressional district uh, is 600,000 people. Now, there are, there are children in that number, so so they don't vote. But let's say, you know, I don't know, half or so, 300,000. One vote out of 300,000 is a drop in the ocean. And the chances that, that your vote will determine who uh, holds that congressional seat. Like I say, are tiny. It's not impossible, but it's very close to zero. It's not much above zero. And so most, you know, most of the time, the overwhelming majority of the time, um, if you stay home, it's not going to make any difference. And it's even, and you know, this is true in, in, uh, pre, you know, presidential years uh, with the fifty different uh, uh, elections for president. If you, for example, if you live in Massachusetts and uh, you want to vote for the Republican, well, you might as well stay home. Yeah. I just think it's interesting winning winning in Massachusetts is so tiny why bother. I just think it's interesting that the 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 this right to vote, right? This concept is sort of like the ultimate oxymoron that challenges what a right is. I mean, if you have this right to vote, then it's like, well then you're saying that it's a right to use the tyranny of majority to take other people's rights from them. Sheldon, hold on, if you would, please. Um, and you can give us a call at 855-450-FREE. What do you think about the right to vote? Is it important to you? 855-450-3733. Many people are offended when I say it doesn't matter. 855-450-FREE. Free Talk Live. Attention, business owners. Do you know the three most critical letters in business? CEO? MBA? Nope. Here's a hint. These three little letters can make the difference between making a fortune and losing everything. ROI? The answer is INC, as in incorporation. Because if you're not incorporated and someone sues your business, you can lose it all. Your home, your car, even your life savings. That's why Incorporate.com is now giving away a free incorporation guide to all business owners. So you can incorporate in just 10 minutes. Protect your home. Protect your car. Protect your life savings. Call 1-800-941-1029 for your free 10-minute incorporation guide from Incorporate.com. They don't provide legal or financial advice. They just make incorporating forming an LLC quick and easy. Get the three little letters that can mean the difference between making a fortune and losing everything. For your free guide, call 1-800-941-1029. That's 1-800-941-1029. Gold. It's like nothing else on Earth. From the Romans through the Renaissance, from the Industrial Age to the Space Age, gold has weathered the test of time. For 6,000 years, gold has remained the ultimate store of wealth. According to the World Gold Council and the U.S. Mint, demand is at an all-time high. The stage is being set for the reemergence of gold as the common-sense alternative to a fiat paper currency that gets weaker every day. Midas Resources is proud to offer the hard-hitting report that arms you with the truth you need to protect you and your family from the Fed's plans for your hard-earned money. Don't gamble with your future. Call Midas Resources today and ask for your free copy of As Good As Gold. Call 1-800-686-223. For the report the Fed hopes you'll never see. As good as gold can be yours by calling 800-686-2237. If you have ever thought about owning gold, you must read this report. Call Midas today at 800-686-2237. Are you looking for an excuse to come check out New Hampshire this fall? You're invited to Keenvention. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. 
You can explore the beautiful little city of Keene, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, do some Robin Hooding, and learn about making the move. Keenevention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit Keenevention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year's keynote speeches and panels will be announced via the Keenevention blog and Facebook, so stay tuned there for the latest. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keene for Keenevention this October 30th through November 1st. Tickets are available now at a special early bird price of just $50 via credit card or Bitcoin. That $50 price only lasts through the end of June, so don't delay. Reserve your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Visit Keenvention.info for more and look for our page and event on Facebook. That's Keenvention.info. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. Free Talk Live, 855-450-FREE. It's 855 855- Four five zero three seven three three. You can call in and talk about whatever's on your mind. But we've been talking to Sheldon Richmond, Liberty Luminary, I would say, well published Liberty author about the uh, you know this whole idea of a mandatory vote because this was trotted out by uh, Barack Obama and it had a little it got it got some legs. Uh, few days ago and i think it's uh, it's worth talking about they have mandatory voting in australia and are things so much better there seems unlikely i want to talk about some of the, the ramifications uh, about this but real quick i want to tell you about where the best place to get cryptocurrencies is whether you want to get bitcoin or litecoin or dogecoin you should do it from expresscoin.com it's fast safe easy and inexpensive they're a licensed money services business. They, you can do business with them whether you're in the U.S. or Canada. All you need to do is uh, start off at expresscoin.com. You can do it with a money order or a check. And you can even do it from your smartphone phone by downloading their app at expresscoin.com. Use coupon code FTL to get up to $40 worth of your favorite cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, Litecoin, Dashcoin at expresscoin.com. No fee if you use coupon code FTL. And you order under $40 worth. It's expresscoin.com, coupon code FTL. Let's get back to Sheldon Richmond. Sheldon, who benefits from mandatory voting? Well, I think the politicians would because they could uh, claim, uh, look at the great turnout. And uh, and uh, I suppose who, you know, it's hard to say which party would benefit more. Uh, the, the point is, you'd be look the the level of, uh, of knowledge that the, the the average voter has today is very uh, low, and so it probably couldn't go a whole lot lower if you had mandatory voting. So I don't think the overall knowledge level would be uh, you know below what it is today. So it's hard to it's hard to know who would um, benefit most, but both sides would the system would benefit in the sense that the politicians could say. Look at the great turnout, and they won't remind you that uh, you know some people came out because they, they were going to be. Uh, fine. Doesn't uh, that doesn't that actually just undermine their their claim? If you force everybody to vote, then at that point they can't claim uh, any kind of uh, uh, you know value from people coming out. But you can't say, well, look, only three percent of people came out to vote for you in a city election. It's not like you've got a mandate, Mister Mayor. You stink. <laughs> you know, I mean, look, the, the, the flaws in the system are so uh, serious. 
you know, there's there's no and this has been studied forever by economists and other other people. There's a great book on this by Brian Kaplan called uh, The Myth of the Edu- uh, Myth, Myth of the Informed Voter, I think it's called. Uh, there's no incentive to be informed because people know that they're not going to make a difference. Most people don't go to the polls thinking they're going to be the decisive vote. So Why people do they go? don't. Well, they go. Some of them believe it's just some, it's something you should do. Yep. They, they've learned it in school, the public schools. They want to get a little sticker for uh, you know for their shirt that says "I voted." They want to be able to tell their friends. Maybe that maybe the uh, you know depending on the the political uh, circles they travel in, they they want to uh, be part of the crowd. Uh, you know, they might like a, a particular person. I mean, there are people who uh, I'm sure voted for Ron Paul who uh, didn't think he was ever going to be president and didn't think their vote was going to matter, but they felt good being part of a community. I mean, I don't criticize a motive like that. I, uh, uh, the only criti- the only motive I criticize is, is uh, like I said, in most elections, uh, if you think you're going to make the difference. Uh, but there's no one. I, I there's used no one to sense. drive. Uh, I used to drive oh, a taxi of. cab. Hold on, hold on, Sheldon. I used to drive a taxi cab, and at one point, um, a lady offered me twenty dollars in the form of a tip if I would vote for John Kerry. Now, what I didn't tell her was I was convicted felon and this was the state of Florida and I couldn't vote, so therefore I just refused her money rather than taking it um, on false pretenses. Um, but uh, you know, she offered me twenty bucks to vote for John Kerry. That lady believed my vote mattered, didn't she? Well, she's not very intelligent. It's just the <laughs> she can't do math. Because she would have been a convicted felon. I don't think you're allowed to pay people to to right. vote for other people. I think I'm sure that's a crime. Well, it's highly um, illegal well, to do that. It, think, yes, it, it's uh, it's illegal, but it's unlikely anyone to catch me. <laughs> if you have a right to your vote, why don't you have a right to sell your vote? Indeed. Uh, yeah, you know, I don't know why I can't go on eBay. Now there's a trust problem. How do I, how do, uh, you may you may buy my vote for for candidate X, and how do you how do you know I'm actually going to not you know not vote for candidate Y? So there's a trust issue there. But why should that be against the law? The irony is, is that I, if there was mandatory voting, I think that, you know, either you'd see one thing where they'd still have these low voter turnouts, which would kind of uh, indicate like, hey, people, you're, you're having a mandatory voter, uh, to, you're, you're having this mandatory voting and yet people still aren't showing up. Ha ha. You know, that that's kind of would be one irony. Uh, but the other thing that would be kind of interesting is I think if there were mandatory voting, I think more people would be willing to break that law and sell their vote because they'd be, uh, you know, they'd feel... Uh, sort of uh, rebellious against being forced to do that and say, well, if I have to do this, then I'm going to sell it. You sell your vote on a relatively regular basis anyway. If you think about it, um, you know, if, as a husband or a wife or as a family member, if you're going and if you're going to go, if you're going to go home for Thanksgiving dinner, things are going to be worse or better depending on uh, who you vote for if the family really cares about that sort of thing. Maybe. I don't know. There are a lot of families out there that have, you know, spouses that vote for different people I, I'm, I'm not saying there aren't certainly um that's happened at my house but the uh, you know what i'm saying is is that oftentimes there's there's uh there's tension in a household uh over over a vote so to some extent you can just appease people by saying yeah, oh, yeah i voted for him or her or whomever well yeah the person not no one's going to know because it's a secret ballot it's that much. Uh, that's I, I like I like uh, Alexander Spooner's uh, uh, indictment of the secret ballot. You know, he says that that just shows you what a conspiracy it all is. We don't even know uh, who who actually voted for these uh, thieves that get in. You should at least have to show your face if you're going to vote for thieves. Uh, you should have to show your face. Well, why are they, why are these uh, the voters? Why why are the you know the the um, the the, prin- the principles of these agents, namely the politicians? Why are the principles, the, the voters, allowed to keep their faces covered? Let, let us know who's voting for the, the bigger of, uh, say, the two thieves, if that happens to be the case. Uh, so, so a Spooner in, uh, in his great essay, uh, you know, the Constitution of No Authority, No Treason Number 6, well, has a great discussion I, of voting. I recommend everybody read it. I'm curious to what your answer to this would be, but I would think that the, uh, the devil's, you know, in playing devil's advocate, that uh, the argument against that would be, uh, that, you know, if someone were a violent dictator and wanted to, you know, kill off the opposition or, or deal with someone, people who voted for a particular candidate, or if there was a large enough group of people that were involved in that sort of activity, that that's why you would want a secret ballot. Well, I'm not saying that, that one one could outweigh the other, but that doesn't it doesn't uh, diminish the indictment itself. But the thing, sure. w- what destroys the um, indictment is, is that you can go out there with a camera and ask people in the street what it is, who they voted for, and then ask them who the vice president is and how many states yeah. there are <laughs> and, uh, you know, who won the Civil War and a variety of things that they simply cannot answer. I mean, if you don't know, if you don't know how many states there are, you shouldn't be voting. 
I, I mean, it's just yeah. I, 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 want, I once proposed it was tongue in cheek that they not tell you what the what day the election is and where the polls are because you don't you only want the most enterprising people to vote if you believe in voting right. So only people who can figure it out at the day and the time and the place <laughs> uh, should be voting because uh, everyone else is you know too dumb to vote. And look, there's no it's, and I don't blame the people. It's not that they're dumb. It's that they have better things to do with their time. They're low information voters. Sheldon Richmond, thank you so much. Can you plug um, your work right now? Yeah, you can find my stuff at uh, sheldonrichmond.com. That's, that's free association. That's the name of the blog. Free Sheldon association, sheldonrichmond.com. Thanks so much for spending time with us. My pleasure. Bye-bye. 855 free if you want to talk about voting or anything else. 855-450-3733. This alert just... Business owners and leaders of organizations who've been waiting for the right time to build. General Steel has made it impossible to wait any longer with rock bottom prices that could save you thousands. That's right, General Steel, America's leader in pre engineered structures, is offering buildings at prices you will never see again. Don't miss these prices a 50 by 100 for $35,000. You heard right, that's 5,000 square feet for $35,000. Manufacturers, if you need a larger building, try a 100 by 100 commercial building for $129,000. You can't afford to rent with these prices. Imagine a 70 by 100 foot church building for under $69,000. With the economy improving and interest rates still at historic lows, you can't afford to wait. So call 866-91-STEEL. Lock in your price now. Call 866-91-STEEL. That's 866-917-8335. Free Talk Live's recent Bitcoin sale was a big success, so we decided to extend the 50% discount through April 17th. Free Talk Live was the first ad venue in the world to accept Bitcoins for ads. We love the concept of a value-based digital currency that allows people to actually control their own money. We introduced Roger Veer, Bitcoin Jesus, to Bitcoins, and here's what he said. Free Talk Live is the premier voice for the peace and liberty Bitcoin will bring to the world. By broadcasting this message since 2011, Free Talk Live has been instrumental in creating the widespread adoption that we have today. If you need some advertising for your business, website, or organization, and you want to save half off, send me an email right now, mark at freetalklive.com. This is your chance to save 50% on national radio and podcast ads. Just pay with Bitcoin. Email mark at freetalklive.com. That's mark at freetalklive.com. New Hampshire is under quarantine as walking corpses devour the flesh of the living. Max is 11 years old and surviving alone. Slow moving and non-thinking, the dead swarm his home. Now he must apply his porcupine freedom scouts training to improvise his escape. Look for Survivor Max on Facebook, read reviews on Amazon, or read Chapter 1 at SurvivorMax.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. After excitedly posting an image of a Lamborghini Rebenton to his Facebook account earlier this afternoon, 38-year-old little boy Nick Weber talked to Onion reporters about his passion for fast cars. When I saw that car, I was like, whoa, it was so cool. I had to show it to all my friends. I like red cars the best, but only ones that are really, really fast. I can't wait to get one when I'm older. I'm going to get the fastest car in the whole world. <laughs> Though Weber also frequently posts about his other interests, which include motorcycles, fighter jets, and Marvel superhero Iron Man, the nearly 40-year-old small child confirmed that sports cars are his favorite, and the picture of the bright yellow Lamborghini has already garnered 15 likes and 9 comments from other enthused middle-aged children who are friends with Weber on the social networking site. My best friend Bradley, he sent me a picture of a blue convertible that's so awesome, it has these big wheels, and even has a racing stripe on it. After watching several online videos of fast cars and eating a peanut butter and jelly sandwich for lunch, the homeowning little tyke went to his room to take a nap. This is the Onion News Network.
You can interact with other LRN listeners in our message board at forum.lrn.fm. That's forum.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, 855-450-3733. It's 855-450-FREE. You can call in and talk about whatever is on your mind, this live edition of Free Talk Live with Mark. And Johnson. You need to protect yourself online. Your internet service provider is saving all of your surfing history, likely for many months, if not years. There's lots of room on computers these days. Memory's cheap, so they're saving that surfing history. Criminals are trying to sniff your Wi-Fi packets. Governments and corporations are limiting what you can see on the Internet and tracking you as you move about. ProXPN can solve all of that. Simply download an app for Windows, Mac, iOS, Android, even Linux, and then just connect to the Internet with uh, using this uh, the service, and you're protected from all of it. No more prying, no more spying. One account works for all your devices. No need to have a separate account for each device. I think that's important. You know, that saves you some money. Just go to proxpn.com slash FTL and use the promo code FTL50, and it'll save you 50% off of an annual account. That's like 5 bucks a month um, total. So there you go. FTL50, you'll get uh, the savings for the lifetime of the account, no matter how long you keep it. That's the premium account. And with the premium account, you get unlimited bandwidth, servers all around the world, the ability to privately torrent and get past regionally blocked websites. And this is important, ProXPN doesn't keep records of your online surfing, uh, surfing habits. You get all of that with a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee. Go to ProXPN.com slash FTL and use promo code FTL50 and get a great discount on privacy that's pri- priceless. ProXPN.com slash FTL. Let's go to Mike calling in from Oregon. Mike, you're on Free Talk Live. What's on your mind? Hey, folks. How are you today? All's well. Uh, two things, Mark. Actually, uh, one was the – I heard about you talking about the mandatory voting that I guess Obama was uh, petitioning for or something like that. Um, yeah, we just had Sheldon Richmond on talking about that, right? Okay. Um, so I guess out here in Oregon, I don't, I don't vote. I haven't voted since 2004 when I was in New Hampshire, and that's the last time I voted. Um, but I, they have something out here that they passed the state of Oregon, which uh, registers you. If you have a driver's license, you're automatically registered to vote. Now, I don't know if, you know, what party they put you in, Republican or Democrat. It's all the same to me. But, um, I mean, I don't know how they're going to enforce something like this. I really don't have any intention of voting because I don't find the system to be legitimate. But um, it's just something I kind of wanted to kind of add. I don't know how this matches up with the mandatory voting that Obama's talking about. But I kind of like the idea of um, being registered to vote and not voting. And here's the reason is generally when they talk about people voting, they'll talk about the percentage of registered voters that voted. So what they'll do is they'll cut out the, uh, the population. There's like 310 million people in the United States. I don't know how many of them are registered to vote, but I imagine it's somewhere around 200 million. So cutting out about a th- more than a third of the population right there. And then they'll, um, you know, talk about 50 percent or whatever of registered voters voted in the, you know, the last election. And that's, um, you know, that's one way that they kind of boost their uh, numbers if, if uh, you know, their percentage numbers, because they don't take the percentage of the population that voted because some percentage of the population can't vote. You have uh, felons, you have uh, young people, and then there's the people that have just never bothered to register to vote or are not registered to vote. And many, they don't want to talk about those people. Those people have opted out of the system. This is one of the reasons that I kind of, I think it's silly, the whole Facebook campaigns, the vote for nobody. Well, nobody has won just about every single election since the United States began, and nobody has ever taken office. So you can't trust nobody uh, when you vote for nobody, if you know what I mean. Right. Sure. Oh, I, I agree. And, you know, the other thing, too, you were saying was, uh, you know, it kind of boosts the numbers to see who voted, but it also shows that the people, if you, if you kind of look at the difference, it shows the people who were registered to vote who didn't vote. So 
it, you can actually, I would much rather focus on that because, like, you know, less people are voting, you know, the better, but they're still going to have their foolish elections. So, I mean, yeah. it's kind of a double-edged sword. But they're going to have their elections no matter what. Um, this is what we've seen. Yeah. We've seen elections where in towns where there's uh, the population so small that nobody, sometimes nobody will vote, uh, show up to vote. The candidate who registered for the office didn't show up to vote for himself. Um, and yeah. then how many stories are there where uh, that we don't get to see of 10 people showing up to vote and that sort of thing? Um, you know, when you look I'm at so these... busy thinking of nobody as a person, and when you say nobody showed up to vote, I'm like, well, that's good. And, you know, <laughs> nobody should vote for someone, you know. The, uh, yeah. So when you look at... <laughs> When you look at these, it's um, it, it's just it shows what they'll do is they'll just reschedule the election, and then as long as they get one person and out of well, I don't know a hundred or whatever in a town to show up, it's fine. The election's legit. There, there's no there's no threshold. There's no bottom uh, lower threshold for what makes a vote legitimate, and it should right. be some percentage of the population if it's if somebody's going to take office as, uh, you know for it to be legitimate. Right. Right. Um, yeah, you make good points. Um, one other thing, too, I wanted to talk about, Mark, I, I think a few weeks ago on the show you were talking about trying to lose some weight or, or whatnot. Um, have you considered doing what's called a plant-based diet? Become a vegetarian? Uh, almost, well, almost like vegan. Like, don't do any animal products. Um, it's actually, I'm doing it right now. I went over to Beaverton, Oregon, and I talked to a, a doctor I have a famous doctor named Craig uh, McDougall, and he has pretty much shown me how to do a plant-based diet. And I was kind of skeptical at first about doing this. And I, you know, I've always been kind of a heavy guy, and I've had terrible muscle inflammation, um, you know, in back in the day from from gluten and from the meat and and just like stuff in the meat. And he, I've been doing, you know, pota- just potatoes and fruit and vegetables. And I'll tell you, I've lost. A good amount of inches, some weight. I'm feeling better, and I'll tell you this: uh, the only thing I really miss is I'm a big tuna fish guy. You know, the meat I can do without, but the tuna was something I was really craving. But now, I've been doing the plant-based diet. No, no animal products, no milk, no dairy. And I'll tell you, it, it's definitely something to look into. I mean, I know you raised. You lose weight. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I know you. You know, raised pigs and chickens on your your land, but Just pigs. it's. Uh, Oh, just oh, just pigs. Okay. I help a far- um, I help another me- farmer with their, with her chickens. Um, so I process about right. 150 chickens a year. Um, by process, okay. you means kill and stick your uh, your hand up in their guts. Oh, okay, um, but I mean to do a plant based diet, it's, it's very satisfying. My girlfriend and I are doing, it and we love it. And I'll tell you, I eat about two times a day, and it's it's great. You eat just twice a day. Uh. Yeah, usually like usually like a, a lunch and a dinner, maybe a, a snack in between here and there, but that's about it. And so, what does um, your average I, lunch I, consist of? Like seventy three cucumbers. Average, <laughs> uh, no, <laughs> you don't want to do too, that much. But I will do like two baked potatoes, uh, like in the microwave, uh-huh. and I will do maybe like a tomato, avocado, and like half a cucumber with a little bit of vinegar, or uh, maybe for breakfast I'll have some oatmeal and like two or three bananas. And I'll tell you, I'm very So you're having a dry baked potato? Like, no butter, obviously, because you can't do that. So what do you... No, no butter. And I'll tell you, it's awesome. It's absolutely awesome. And you, maybe you put... That, little, that maybe sure a sounds bit. awesome. It's, 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 it sounds for it all is. the world like <laughs> Stockholm Syndrome is what it sounds like. <laughs> it, I know it sounds weird, but I'll tell you, I, it, I had my doubts at first, but I, I've never felt... Better and the weight is definitely coming off. And I believe kidding. those two things. Um, at, sure. I, I believe those two statements when you say them. You've never felt better and the weight is coming off. I believe that entirely. And uh, once one sees something like that happening, I can imagine you can get pretty excited about it at that point. Um, it's right. you know that would that would be something to be able to get excited about, like feeling better and uh, the weight falling off. I I. I I, I feel entirely, I guess the best way for me to describe this is I feel entirely disempowered around the thought process of cutting meat out of my diet. <laughs> like, it it makes me feel like I'm drowning, you know, that kind of sort of lack of power or control. Right, right. I, I know what you mean. It's Mike, I'd love to talk to you about it more. Let me uh, call in and talk about it uh, later, what, what your successes are. 855-450-FREE, Free Talk Live. 855-450-FREE. 
DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. Pop quiz, kid. You know it's at 3221 Highway 22? The new Dickinson Granger branch. You know it was there before that? Who cares? There's a Granger branch there now. Granger's got everything we need from inventory management to safety services and solutions. They even have this handy mobile app for easy browsing on the go. Let's head over there and stock up. There's nothing I love more than a new Granger branch, kid, including you. Get it? Got it? Good. Call clickgranger.com slash oil and gas or stop by. Granger for the ones who get it done. If the IRS has garnished your paycheck or seized money from your bank account, you need to get professional tax help now. Fast action is required to put a halt to these aggressive IRS collection tactics. You can count on the knowledgeable team of tax professionals at Wall & Associates. With over 30 years of experience, Wall & Associates has settled the tax problems of thousands of taxpayers for a small fraction of what they owed. For a free face-to-face -face consultation, call 1-800-425-4610 to put a wall between you and the IRS, 1-800-425-4610, or look for us on the web at wallandassociates.net. We solve tax problems. If you hire Walland Associates today, you'll never have to talk to the IRS again. To stop the levies and seizures today, take action now. Call Walland Associates at 1-800-425-4610. Wall and Associates, 1-800-425-4610. Based on actual cases, results may vary. Not a solicitation for legal services. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keene is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keene is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to mymagicmud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin, mymagicmud.com. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, 855-450-3733. It's 8 55 for 50 free. I should mention that you can uh, call us on Skype. I've, I haven't really haven't done that this show. Um, what you can do is just, you know, ping our username. Uh, send us a, a request at lrn.fm. That's our username. We'll approve it, and then you can call in. Generally, you sound a bit better on Skype, depending on the quality of the microphone you're using. But usually, you sound better on Skype. 
And, of course, there's the telephone lines at 855-450-3733. That's available to you. So it's Mark with you. And Johnson. Please wanted, go ahead. I wanted to bring something up uh, in relation to the, you know, since we were having that sort of diet discussion before then, I wanted to bring up something that I learned uh, a little while ago uh, because it became uh, news about uh, gluten intolerance. Have you, you've heard, have you heard that gluten intolerance is not a real thing? Mostly I've heard that. Yeah. So essentially what these, these scientists came out, and I hope this is probably going to make some people like lose their minds, but um, essentially these scientists uh, came out and said that if you're gluten, you know, people who are saying that they're gluten intolerant, well, first of all, that's just not true. You either have celiac disease or you don't. There's no uh, sort of in-between. You're not just slightly sensitive to gluten. Um, but what they've discovered is that essentially the people who probably think that they have uh, this gluten sensitivity are probably what is uh, are sensitive to what are, are called FODMAPs. It's an acronym. Um, and before I explain exactly what FODMAPs are, I guess the sort of reason why uh, I brought this up and Mark, you and I kind of had a short discussion is just, you know, I had lost in the past, I've gained a lot of it back, I'd lost 70, somewhere between 70 and 90 pounds. Yeah, I've seen point. you thinner, I've seen you fatter. Yeah. And, uh, I go back and forth. Well, yeah. I, you know, I, I went way down when I started doing crazy amounts of exercise and I went low carb. Mm -hmm. um, at one point, I stopped being low carb and decided I liked food. Because carbs are good. <laughs> They're really good. Um, <laughs> they they don't do much for your, you know, health, but uh, they sure do, sure do taste good. Um, but. Uh, so I felt really good eating diet, you know, uh, consisting of mostly meat. And it's sort of like, well, if you can lose weight doing these, you know, high protein, high meat, high fat diets, and you can lose a lot of weight uh, sort of, uh, you know, eating these completely vegetable plant-based diets, it's like, well, sort of where's the, the intersect? And I've read some interesting articles, you know, some people, there was actually a set of twins that just did a, a n almost no sugar, high fat, you know, low carb diet. And yeah, they did there's both. There's another twin. Yeah, they did both. And they both, it was fascinating. And they kind of both felt awful and neither one liked the diet. I, I still well, who think- who the hell likes diets? Well, yeah, exactly. Well, I, I will say that low carb diet was not really all that hard. I mean, it, it's a little bland in my- You really don't call something that uh, you enjoy doing a diet. You can say it's well, it is, yeah. I wouldn't say that diet, I enjoyed it exactly. You know, obviously, I'm not doing it now, and I've gained a bunch of weight from not doing it. But um, at any rate, I think that there's sort of an intersection. I think one of those intersections is in this this uh, FODMAP kind of thing rings a little true for seem. I think a lot of people who might have this sort of what they think is a gluten sensitivity. So, what's a FODMAP? All right, I think you might be interested in this, Mark. So, FODMAP F the F in FODMAP stands for Fermentable. Fermentable carbohydrates are carbohydrates, carbohydrates that are fermented by bacteria instead of broken down by our digestive enzymes. In most people, some fermentable carbohydrates are healthy sources of food for helpful bacteria that ferment them. These can include the prebiotics uh, and actually improve digestive and overall health. In people with FODMAPs intolerance, certain carbohydrates become too fermentable, resulting in gas, bloating, pain, poor digestion, as well as a pro proliferation of unwanted pathogenic bacteria. And that would account for like a lot of breads and certain, you know, easily digestible, easily, you know, simple carbohydrates that are broken down too easily and ferment, you know, certain sugars. Okay. So O is for oligosaccharides. Uh, there are short chain carbohydrates. I figured. Yeah, a short chain carbohydrates, including fructans, fructo, fructo oligosaccharides, and FOS or insulin, and galactans, uh, raffinose or stachyose. Fructans. None of these words mean anything yeah, to me, Johnson. Sure. I shouldn't even. Fructans are uh, chains of fructose with a glucose molecule at the end. Galactans are chains of galactose with a fructose molecule. So what that means is it's essentially a lot of sugar, sugar. fruit sugar, that kind of thing. Okay. Uh, D is that for makes people feel bad. Yeah, can be if you're FODMAP sensitive. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Too much. It's essentially, I mean, obviously any of this stuff in moderation is not going to be, but if you're sensitive. It sounds like these people are going after my wine with fer fermentation and fruit. Sure, but if you drink too much wine, I mean, it's widely known if you drink too much wine, that can make you feel really bad in a lot of different ways. Um, <laughs> it, it can make you uh, wake up in a gutter. And, uh... <laughs> so D is for disaccharides. These are pairs but of sugar mo now, molecules. Is my understanding uh, a certain amount of red wine, like two glasses of red wine a day, is generally considered good, good for you? Right, sure. But it might be less than that. That number might yeah. be lower for people One with a sensitivity, yeah. right? 
So the di disaccharides are uh, milk sugars, lactose, galactose molecule, glucose molecules. Like mm -hmm. some milk sugars can be, some people can be sensitive to those. Oh, the, yeah, a lot of people, man. lactose. Sorry. M, monosaccharides. And the, you notice a theme here. These are all like different sugars yes. for the most part. Well, sugar's poison. I think they've almost right. they've almost made that 100% clear. Right. It's um, just like alcohol. It can be very, very difficult to, to, to pare down, but... It's it's bad news, man. You right. shouldn't be getting more than 200 calories a day out of sugar, and that is hard. Right. Especially if you're talking about, I'm talking about like sort of dextrose type sugar, right. the refined stuff, especially. Yeah. So this says free fructose is the monosaccharide to watch out for with FODMAPs intolerance. So, you know, soda. <laughs> yeah. A Each is can 180 calories. Yeah. A is for and. Every good list needs a conjunction. <laughs> oh, yeah. And then P is for polyols. Polyols include sugar alcohols like xylitol, sorbitol, and maltitol. Uh, for an idea of their effects, uh, type one of them into Google and note the autofill choice. Um, so, you know, here's a hint. It's usually diarrhea or constipation or gas. And, yeah, I uh, when I was doing the low-carb thing, have you ever had any of that sugar-free candy? Yeah. A lot of those have that maltitol or the sorbitol oh, or the xylitol. There's xylitol a... is not so bad. I haven't had a problem with that, but xylitol is deadly to a lot of animals, like really, really super deadly. <laughs> oh, like like so they don't even put small amounts, like a, if your dog gets xylitol gum, your dog's probably dead, you know, like that type of thing. Um, but those, like sorbitol... Oh, I've never had worse stomach pain than after having like some candy, you know, like, and it wasn't even a, like a lot. I think it was like, like a half a bag of those, like, you know, like little, they're like, uh, what do you, what do you call those when they're, they're the candy that you put in your mouth and you suck on them for a while? Hard candy. Yeah. Hard candy. That's um, the <laughs> if you, there's a, there's a really great uh, review on Amazon of the, <laughs> of the sugar-free gummy bears. Oh, <laughs> if you oh, it, yeah, I've seen I'm going to post that I've seen this. on the Facebook page. <laughs> It oh, that's is. that's just a good half an hour of entertainment <laughs> reading the reviews on those. <laughs> People talking about rating them, you know, five stars and talking about how they've, <laughs> they've never enjoyed, you know, <laughs> having to run so much in their lives. <laughs> oh, dear God, it's hilarious. Oh, those are very funny. Yeah, they could really, uh, the, the pe people are great. Uh, there's some really creative writers out there on the internet. <laughs> and uh, this is some of the best stuff when you're uh, getting a chance to look at this. I'll put it at the Facebook page at facebook.freetalklive.com. But I do want to tease uh, what we're going to be talking about next hour, Johnson. Sure. And apparently, um, without much ado... It looks like there's an executive order that's come out. So Obama, again, sort of passing mandates, um, and he's declaring computer hacking to be a national emergency. Does that sound right to you? <laughs> it sounds ridiculous. I mean, it sounds like what's called techno panic, and it yes. sounds like it's seeping into the government. Well, it, it, a lot of the people in the Bitcoin sphere are very concerned about what um, this could mean for Bitcoin. Um, you know, what what does it mean? Because they're talking about financing, you know, from right. outside the country and these sorts of things, and this could be a this could be a bad thing in that right. sphere. So, um, nothing the government does is going to ever probably be that great for Bitcoin. To be honest, I mean, let's just let's just think about that. There's the not really going to be much that the government's going to do for you here. You know, well, they've been better and they've been worse on the topic. But I, I see what you're saying. Essentially, the government produces the money or a quasi governmental agency known as the Federal Reserve right. produces the money. So Bitcoin is in direct competition with their money um, in the same way that other nations like the, you know, their money, the euro, the ruble, um, you know, the yuan, these sorts of things are also in competition. So you'll hear terminology like the dollar is strong or the dollar is weak. And those have uh, they both have their own advantages and disadvantages when you're when you're looking at things. But, um, you know, to some extent, it's a bit of a horse race. So I'm um, I'm concerned with the idea that uh, the president is a this is a declaration. This is not Congress coming out. The, the people have not spoken here. This is the executive just laying out a mandate. And right. I find this to be very upsetting when it's done. And, um, you know, what does this mean for these enforcement agencies? These executive orders are just dirty. What's the SEC going to do? What's the uh, Securities and Securities Exchange Commission? What's the, uh, the, the, what's the Fed going to do? What are these people going to do? I don't know. 
855-450-3733. It's 855-450-FREE. Free Talk Live. Your opinions welcome. 855-450-3733. New Hampshire is under quarantine as walking corpses devour the flesh of the living. Max is 11 years old and surviving alone. Slow moving and non-thinking, the dead swarm his home. Now he must apply his porcupine freedom scouts training to improvise his escape. Look for Survivor Max on Facebook, read reviews on Amazon, or read chapter one at SurvivorMax.com. In a trial by jury, the primary function of a juror is not to dispense punishment to the accused. It is to protect your fellow citizens from being unjustly deprived of their life, liberty, or property. As a juror, you can say no to unjust laws and prevent government abuses of power by refusing to convict. Legislative, executive, judicial, the fourth branch of government is we the people. Find out more from the fully informed jury association at FIJA.org. Ross Ulbricht was convicted in early 2015 of running the infamous Silk Road Underground Market. The Silk Road was a gift to humanity and helped reduce the harms brought on by drug prohibition. For this good deed, Ross may be spending the rest of his life in prison. His family is planning to appeal his conviction, but they need your support. Please visit FreeRoss.org, where you can contribute via various methods, including Bitcoin. Ross needs your help now more than ever. Visit FreeRoss.org. That's FreeRoss.org. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Canaan, the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Thursday, April 2nd, 2015. Silver is trading at $16.75 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,201 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $248. Antiwar.com reports while their various allies across northern Syria have been all wiped out in attacks by both the Syrian military and rival rebel factions, the Free Syrian Army has claimed a major gain yesterday, capturing the Nasi border crossing on the border with Jordan. This was the only functioning border crossing between Syria and Jordan and has been under military control throughout the civil war. Jordan has announced this crossing is being closed. The U.S. has been training the Free Syrian Army and other rebels inside Jordan and then sending them in to fight in Syria, though this is the first significant gain they've had outside of an older, already closed crossing. The Nasib crossing lies on the Damascus Highway and was materially the last functional land route from Damascus to another country, with most other routes closed by the war. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Coinbase. Coinbase is a simple and secure online Bitcoin wallet for sending, receiving, and storing Bitcoin. I trust Coinbase. You should too. Get started at coinbase.fppradio.com. That's coinbase.fppradio.com. UPI reports a man in Gaza said he was tricked into selling a priceless mural by internationally renowned artist Banksy for $175. The mural was painted anonymously by the artist on the door left standing of a house destroyed by a bombing. The work, titled Bomb Damage, shows the Greek goddess Niobe mourning. In classical mythology, Niobe is often associated with bereaved mothers mourning the loss of her children. Rabi Darduna, the door's owner, was a approached by local artist Bilal Khalid, who said he was purchasing the painted doors to put in a museum in Gaza. Darduna said, Then someone called Bilal Khalid called me on the phone. He said, We've painted seven paintings on seven doors, and I bought all of the doors except yours, and I paid 500 shekels for each. At first, I refused to sell it as I thought the door was worth more as it is heavy metal, and I asked for 1,000 shekels. Finally, we agreed on 700 shekels. 
roughly $175. Darduna said Khalid insisted and made him sign a document saying he agreed to the price. He was hesitant but needed the money. Banksy murals have sold for hundreds of thousands of dollars. Darduna said, I did not know this was this valuable. I heard it can be sold for millions. Now I want my door back. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. Reuters reports Arkansas Governor Asa Hutchinson told lawmakers on Wednesday to revise a bill that rights activists and U.S. businesses say allows discrimination against gays and home state corporate giant Walmart praised his actions. Indiana's governor a day earlier said lawmakers should fix a similar Religious Freedom Restoration Act in his state. After it was enacted last week, the state was hit with protests, threatened boycotts, and warnings from powerful U.S. firms of pending economic damage for being seen as standing against U.S. ideals of inclusion. In a news conference at the Capitol in Little Rock, Hutchinson, who previously said he would sign the bill, said he was sending the act back to the Republican-controlled legislature to be rewritten so it can better balance tolerance for diversity and protections for religious freedom. Hutchinson said, We want to be known as a state that does not discriminate but understands tolerance. The governor said his own son had asked him to veto the bill, adding a personal element to the pressure to reject the bill. While Hutchinson spoke, scores of protesters outside waved rainbow flags of the gay rights movement. A day earlier, Walmart, the world's biggest retailer, called on Hutchinson to veto the bill. On Wednesday, it commended his decision and, in a Twitter post, urged lawmakers to make certain any legislation does not encourage discrimination. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. Zone. I'm Brooke Alvarez. Our top story tonight, Congress has passed a bill naming incomprehensible shouting the official language of the United States. I'm sick and tired of listening to people who say that Americans should not know what they know and that's not what it is and what the policy is. The red-blooded American is what we have in this day and age. Under the new law, public school classes will only be taught in incomprehensible shouting and government agencies will no longer offer translators to non-shouting speakers. In addition, a new test will be added to the naturalization process whereby potential immigrants must prove they have a working knowledge of incomprehensible shouting before they're granted citizenship. The movement started in 2008 with a grassroots organization called Americans for Doing It Right Because We Got It Now Because Who Else Right? Come on! This is the Onion News Network, a tomahawk of honesty in the skull of lies. Free Talk Live, 855-450-FREE. It's 855-450-3733. You can call in and talk about whatever's on your mind, but uh, I've got to say I was a little stunned to see this news um, that it looks like President Obama has declared hacking a national emergency, issued a broad and far-reaching cybersecurity executive order. Johnson? So apparently uh, today, he the order that he issued was a, a far-reaching cybersecurity executive order that allows the executive branch to unilaterally financially target foreign-based hackers regardless of any laws or extradition treaties the United States has with the country the hacker or hacker group lives in. The order empowers the State Department and Treasury Department to freeze the bank accounts and financial assets of those suspected of hacking the U.S. government or U.S. companies, of those who have sponsored hacking, and of those who have used hacked information to get a competitive advantage or private financial gain. It would also allow the government to go after hackers who attacked critical inf- or sorry who attack critical infrastructure which includes the power grid, water sanitation plants, and more, 
who are caused. Those are all fine and dandy, but what worries me is the government has sent people to jail for hacking, for Google searches, and that sort of thing. I mean, just right. posting links. Well, this is this is sp- more specific. I mean, so they're talking about uh, you know other things that they could do, like uh, causing significant disruption to the availability of a computer network, stealing intellectual property. That's concerned, um, or having impacted the economic health or financial stability of the United States. And so the economic health. Wh- I mean, how does how does Bitcoin fit into that? Isn't Bitcoin? Couldn't Bitcoin? S- uh, you know, significantly damage the economic health of the organization that calls itself the United yep, States. I certainly think so. I think that could be absolutely be a problem. I think, uh, you know, and Bitcoin. I don't know if you're aware of this. Are you aware of Crypto Wall and Crypto Locker? I don't know what those are. Okay, those are two computer viruses that only they basically only exist uh, because of Bitcoin. Essentially, the the virus, what it does, and this is these are terrifying viruses. These are some like these are the type of viruses where it's like. I don't think that I'm going to get a computer virus, but you know, it's like I've gotten some of the weaker variants of a computer virus, in the, you know, in the past. But like, you get this, you're SOL. I mean, it's a big problem because okay. um, what the virus does is it makes a copy of your files uh, encrypted, deletes the original files, and then offers to encrypt unencrypt the files for you if yeah. you pay a ransom in Bitcoin. Yes, I have seen that happen to people. Yeah, so I've had a person, uh, a, 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 some guys that a friend of mine know called me up on the phone wanting to buy some Bitcoin from me so that they could pay off this ransom. Right. Yeah. That's so when you tell them no. <laughs> well, why would I tell them that? Well, because th- you, they shouldn't be paying these people. It's not my job to tell them whether or not I they know, should. I know, but there's, there's a, there are ways to get rid of Crypto Locker that are not paying off the, the criminals. No, well, they, and the, they did they're, it, I'm I sure. mean, they're, they're terrible people. But anyway, okay, so talk, back to the story. Um, and again, one of the concerning things, stealing intellectual property. It's like, okay, great. The government's now the, the whipping boy of the RIAA and the Oh, NDAA. yeah, they, they've Wonderful. always been that. Yeah. So it says, although the language of the order is very careful to not specifically mention governments that hack the United States, that's what this order is actually about, experts say. Let's hope so. Yeah. The order has been in the works for more than two years, according to the Washington Post. The text of the order declares foreign hackers an unusual and extraordinary threat that constitutes a national emergency. The last national emergency bit is important. A law that passed in 1977 called the International Emergency Economic Powers Act Act allows the president to regulate commerce in the event of a national emergency caused by a foreign source and is where Obama has taken the order's power He's going to regulate currency? Something. The order exchange? What? The order applies to any individual or hacker entity, which means a partnership, trust, joint venture, corporation, group, subgroup, or other organization. The language has been purposely kept vague to apply to essentially any foreign cyber threat, according to Peter W. Singer, a cybersecurity strategist at the New American Foundation. The order is modeled on previous U.S. anti-terrorism and is said... Oh, sorry, and anti-nuclear weapons proliferation policies and is likely considered a tool to threaten, deter, and sanction countries that sponsor or harbor cyber hacking groups, Singer said. This is designed to go after the ultimate big fish. Whether or not it specifically says that in the order, the state-linked fish, he he told me, I'm not sure, I guess maybe they're still talking about Singer, um... It's a useful tool for punishing and messaging, but for highly motivated actors, it's unlikely to shift their ultimate calculation. Um, unlike ongoing terrorist programs and nuclear weapons, however, hacking is both notoriously difficult to att- attribute to individuals or specific groups. Right. This is what I'm wondering here. Yeah. Is, is, is Has the executive branch not been doing everything that it could to stop right. hacking up to this point? <laughs> and how does this executive order, other than trying to scare China or Russia or Nigeria, Nigerians right. or whomever it is that they're trying to scare, I mean, what does it do? Yeah, it's very strange. So I want to repeat that line. So unlike ongoing terrorist programs and nuclear weapons, however, hacking is both notoriously difficult to attribute to individuals or specific groups, and it can be done to a highly def- effective degree on a shoestring budget with just a couple people 
Cybercrime is difficult to attribute in part because hackers often use proxies or co-opt other people's computers or networks in order to make it seem like someone else is doing the hacking. For example, it was spoken about many nights on Free Talk Live about the supposedly North Korean uh, movie uh, hack of Sony. Yeah. Like, it's almost assuredly not North Korea doing this hack. They have, like, maybe a 1,000 IPs in the entire country. You know, like, no. Yeah. (laughs) They, um, you know, and when you look at sort of what's going on with computers there, what was the... uh, (laughs) Right. We saw, like, in some movie, some guy just looking at a uh, a start screen or something. Yeah, they're, like, using, like, the green screen gray box computers from, like, the 80s. Yeah. Sorry, they're not hacking. It would take them 30 years to like achieve the same thing that, you know, a 12-year-old would achieve on, you know, a modern laptop. You know, sorry, that's it's just not even it's not reasonable or feasible to to assume that that's what's happening. At any rate, uh and though the order seems intended to go after state-sponsored hackers, there's nothing in the language of the order that would prevent the government from sanctioning, say, individual hacktivists or hacktivist groups that have no relation to any government. In theory, it means that someone who ostensibly has nothing to do with a hack could have their lives ruined by the United States government, regardless of how insulated and United States independent their financial situation may seem. Our reach in... Uh, the global financial network is as broad as it gets, Singer said. It's all-encompassing. It allows you to go after lots of people in a lot of different ways. Amy Stepanovich... Just a, what the government needs. More far-reaching yeah, powers yeah. with fewer checks and balances. Right. Oh, give me some of that. <laughs> Amy Stefanovich, a U.S. policy manager of Access, a digital human rights organization, said that the U.S. government already has enough ways of going after hackers and that this order can be looked at as an overreaction, hey, to the Sony hack and other high profile incidents. So, again, it's it's just what I said. This is techno panic. And in reaction to the Sony hack, it's patently ridiculous because, again, the hackers in the Sony hack probably weren't North Korean. So this seems like, I mean, I almost want to just go full, um, you know, to mention a a competitive radio show, go full Alex Jones here and just be like, it's a false flag attack. They're setting it up to lie to you with their false pretenses and telling you that this is a North Korean cyber attack when really it's the United States government. I mean, it, it, that's what it seems like. This is just so conspiratorial and ridiculous. Does it have anything to do with juice boxes? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> I'm not sure. Alex Jones suggested at one point. I, I love it. It's the video where he suggests the juice boxes are turning boy, little boys gay. Oh, get stuff. yourself a Capri Sun. <laughs> Give it a good squeeze. That little silver pouch, it's delicious. <laughs> You can't argue with a man's talent. He's, he's got a whole bunch of listeners. <laughs> 855-450-3733. It's 855-450-FREE. Does this worry you? It worries me. 855-450-FREE. Free Talk Live. Retrievers, Labradors, Goldens are the main breeds that come through our door, but we'll train anything with four legs and a tail. My husband and I train hunting dogs and also have a boarding and grooming business. Our dogs, they're athletes, and we feed them very quality food. You can't get enzymes in a commercial dog food because they cook it at such a high heat, but adding Dynavite to their diet has every single dog in my kennel looking better than they have ever looked. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. 859-428-1000. The omega-3 fatty acids. Flaxseed, zinc, alfalfa. The digestive enzymes that are cooked out of regular dog food. Dynavite's the bomb. Tell everybody we know about Dynavite. Just feed your dog right. Use Dynavite. If it's working, don't quit. When I get down to the bottom of my box to Dynavite, it's time to place my order. Dynavite dot com. 859-428-1000. 859-428-1000. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. Gold. It's like nothing else on Earth. From the Romans through the Renaissance, from the Industrial Age to the Space Age, gold has weathered the test of time. For 6,000 years, gold has remained the ultimate store of wealth. 
According to the World Gold Council and the U.S. Mints, demand is at an all-time high. The stage is being set for the reemergence of gold as the common sense alternative to a fiat paper currency that gets weaker every day. Midas Resources is proud to offer the hard-hitting report that arms you with the truth you need to protect you and your family from the Fed's plans for your hard-earned money. Don't gamble with your future. Call Midas Resources today and ask for your free copy of As Good As Gold. Call 1-800-686-2236. For the report the Fed hopes you'll never see. As good as gold can be yours by calling 800 686 2237. If you have ever thought about owning gold, you must read this report. Call Midas today at 800 686 2237. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. LRN.FM needs your help getting our satellite signal back on in Africa. Our satellite provider had us on at no charge from 2012 through February of this year when they pulled the channel off the air. Now we're trying to raise $22,000 to continue reaching people with the message of liberty in places where it's needed most. Please visit our Indiegogo fundraiser at africa.lrn.fm. Give what you can and share the link with your friends. africa.lrn.fm. You can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm Free Talk Live. 855-450-FREE. It's 855-450-3733. You can call in, talk about whatever's on your mind. Uh, you can actually use Skype. Our username is lrn.fm. Or you can call us on the regular landline, toll-free, 1-855-450-3733. It's Mark with you. And Johnson. So Ian's been trying out this new product. It's called the Pocket Power Plus, and it is a, you know, a battery charger. There's lots of those out there, but uh, in this case, it is a particularly powerful one, and I guess it's something to do, like, they've done something different with it. Um, it's, you know, sort of technological breakthrough and how much power it can use and how much it can deliver at any given time, and what they, they actually have videos on the internet of this thing jumping cars and uh you know i'm it, it, i find it very impressive but it'll give you days worth of hours or days worth of power depending on the uh, situation what you're putting on with it um you can uh you know if you want to go off the grid for a little while the fact is cell phones they just chew up uh their batteries um throughout the day so you really do need a battery to uh, charge it if you're if you're going to be away from the desk or or the home so it's pocket power plus 9 Dot com. This is uh, it, it's a fascinating pro product, and it comes with all kinds of attachments. It's really great, and I recommend it. Uh, Ian's been uh, thought it was great, so check it out. PocketPowerPlus9.com, and if you go there to that particular site, you can get it for half price. 
Pocket Power Plus Nine, the numeral nine. Um, actually, it doesn't matter whether you uh, you know spell it out or have the the numeral, and that will give you a half off. And use coupon code FTL to save even more. So it's pocketpowerplus9.com, coupon code FTL, and you can get this great product that has, uh, you know, been so gracious as to sponsor Free Talk Live. Pocketpowerplus9.com. Johnson, is there anything more to this executive order where apparently Barack Obama is going to take over all our computers? Yeah, I think there's a little bit more here. So... Amy Stepanovich, a U.S. policy manager of Access, a digital human rights organization, said that the U.S. government has already has enough ways of going after hackers and that this order can be looked at as an overreaction to the Sony hack and other high-profile incidents. The White House's newest executive order, once again, sensationalizes current events to increase the government's power, Stepanovich told the author of the article. Uh, The fact is that we already have strong rules for addressing criminal activity while protecting human rights. The president should look to applying those rules to the Internet rather than inventing dangerous new authorities. Singer noted that the U.S. has indeed sanctioned foreign governments for hacking before, but he says that this bill gives the government better flexibility to go after China, Russia, and some of the other major players in the international cybercrime world. Whether it will work is another question altogether. The U.S. has thrown every sanction possible at North Korea, for example, but it hasn't deterred the country from developing nuclear weapons any less. In the past, the U.S. has also sanctioned nations suspected of harboring terrorist organizations, but that has also had little effect. But because many of the most successful hackers are state-sponsored groups in China and Russia, countries that the U.S. can't exactly end financial dealings with without causing massive international instability, the government wants flexibility to target not only national governments, but smaller groups within foreign countries. Cutting off all of the Chinese government's financial dealings with the United States would crash the worldwide economy and cause a major international incident. Cutting off the bank accounts of individual hackers or small groups of hackers within the Chinese government might have a better impact. Look at the parallel between North Korea Sony hack and Chinese hackers. In the Sony hack, we put targeted sanctions not on the individuals we thought were directly behind it, but on the North Korean government, Singer said. By comparison, we indicted five Chinese military hackers who were low-level for separate hacks against U.S. power companies. These countries are of different sizes and scales. Did so they th- indict these people that were in China? And what good is that going to do? Apparently, I don't know, unless they were able to do some sort of legal, legal hocus-pocus and get... Uh, you know, either extradition or some sort Sounds of cooperation pretty unlikely from the, the Chinese, Chinese government. Chinese government is going to allow them to extradite uh, people that, you know, sp- spy type folks. Certainly does, but maybe there's some sort of uh, bank uh, issues or something that they were able to do. Well, there's the Chinese government uh, does a lot of business with the United States government, whereas the North Korean government does none. That's right. probably the difference. Here. Yeah. So these countries have different sizes and scales, so that's why the government wants to separate it from overall state relations, he added. With hacking now being placed on the same level as terrorism and anti-nuke programs, President Obama has now given his government the power, if it wants to, to cause serious financial ruin and international instability. Oh, wonderful. Let's go to Luke calling in from North Carolina. Luke, you're on Free Talk Live. Hey, I just wanted to point out earlier, uh, somebody said, you know, the difficult thing about hacking is it doesn't take very many resources. It's low cost. You just need a couple of guys in a room with a cheap computer, right? But then somebody said, well, but these guys in North Korea would be sitting on computers from the 80s. That's a contradiction. There's uh, no reason they'd be sitting on computers from the 80s. There's a, okay. They can go next door to China and buy an, an Acer computer. Yeah, sure. They could, right? I mean, they could, but it's very unlikely to happen because they, know, but they don't let anyone leave the country. And, and the internet- Oh, really? So, so the North Korean government does not send people out of their country to go get things from other countries. I don't know whether... make everything on site. I don't know whether or not that happens, but here's the thing. I mean, yeah, okay, if you're talking about an Acer computer, sure. But what we've seen is that we've seen that 
from from people who have gone to North Korea, right? That when North Korea is trying to show off, look at our computer technology, they wheel out this like gigantic gray gray box or beige box computer, and they're like, this is the best technology ever. So yes, while they could send somebody over to get a few Acer computers or whatever, you know, whatever brand of you know low cost. Uh, you know, uh, laptops or whatever, $200, $300 laptops that would be perfectly sufficient for doing hacking for skilled hackers. The difference with North Korea is that we have a, a class of mostly uneducated people. Their, their population of North Korea does not have the education, does not have the resources, and there are like a thousand IP addresses in the country in total. So, yes, while it's low important. cost, it's not, okay, it's not by Stone that, Age. By that. There's a huge by difference. That, by, that argu- by that argument, they also wouldn't be able to develop nuclear weapons because they don't have the money or the resources to do that, right? They're probably getting it from China. That's just silly. Except, for, except for the nuclear We've weapons. Obviously got the better nuclear weapons happened in the 80s. Computers. So computers just didn't make you were wrong. We've had nuclear yeah. weapons well, okay, for so you know, Luke, over 50 years. Let me years. jump in. I, obviously, Johnson's not convincing you. A, what Johnson's saying is, is that when we see video evidence coming out of North Korea, we see video evidence of their computers being these sort of old, bulky-looking things. They don't look very and we new. Know that, and we know that propaganda videos are the same as what goes on behind the scenes, it's right? It's not a propaganda video. It's a document. There's some documentaries by, for example, Vice. Well, okay. Oh, so the, docu- the documentarians got to go into where their hackers work. Okay, no. That's what you're telling me now. Hold they got on. in the top secret North Many, Korean location. Well, there's pictures of uh, Kim Jong-un like in a wooden fishing boat. I mean, you know, they to so? say that to say that North Korea is a uh, my, gonna... my brother my brother uses a wooden fishing boat when he goes and visits South Korea does that mean he doesn't have a computer I He's, like to hold you because I'd like to about? understand what you, how you think North Korea works I want well, you to understand I, I don't that. think that any of us know how North Korea works but I will hold him over if that's what you want to do um, I think you know, I think the most telling thing here is is that you said that there were about a thousand IP addresses in the whole country that, that's a terrible place to hack from. Don't complain about your cable bill going up and up and up. Do something about it. Grab a pencil and jot down this special number. 1-855-905-MY-TV. The more cable TV rates go up, the better digital satellite TV looks. Say goodbye to the cable guy. And get more of your favorite channels in 100% digital quality for less money. Call 1-855-905-MY-TV. Sign up for packages starting as low as $19.99 and there's no equipment to buy. You get free HD TV upgrade, a free DVR upgrade, and free professional and installation you control what you watch when you watch it record your favorite shows pause and rewind live tv even skip the commercials watch local channels too at just $19.99 what are you waiting for pull out your major credit or debit card call 1-855-905-MY-TV 1-855-905-MY-TV say goodbye to the cable guy cut costs and get more 1-855-905-MY-TV 1-855-905-MY-TV This is novelist Tom Robbins. When my mother was diagnosed with glaucoma, her conservative Virginia physician told her there was only one treatment that might ease her pain and save her eyesight. That treatment was medical marijuana, which he could not prescribe. I offered to get her some and teach her how to use it effectively, but my father objected because marijuana was against the law. So my mother, who loved to read and walk in nature, was condemned to grow cruelly, unnecessarily blind. Tragedies like this happen all the time, but they don't have to keep happening. To learn more about medical marijuana, call the Marijuana Policy Project at 1-877-JOIN-MPP or visit them on the web at mpp.org. My name is Jacob Hornberger. I'm president of the Future of Freedom Foundation, which Congressman Ron Paul awarded for having an outstanding freedom website. Write us at FFF at FFF.org, and we'll send you a free three-month subscription to our monthly journal of libertarian essays and our booklet, Economic Liberty in the Constitution, which George Mason University economics professor Walter Williams praised in a recent column. That's FFF at FFF.org.
Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click Get Notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. You can connect with the Liberty Radio Network via our Facebook page at facebook.lrn.fm. That's facebook.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, 855-453. It's 855-450-3733. You can call in, talk about whatever's on your mind, this live edition of Free Talk Live. It's Mark with you. And Johnson. 855-450-3733. Do you want to spread the ideas of liberty? You can do it from the back of your car with libertystickers.com. They've got... All kinds of stickers over there at LibertyStickers.com. And you can reach thousands of people with a bumper sticker. You know that you find yourself kind of scooting up in uh, traffic just to read what's on that guy's car. And to some extent, this is what our political conversations have devolved to in this country. So let your voice be heard. Check out the vast selection of witty, poignant, pithy, and downright bombastic liberty-oriented messages at libertystickers.com. We were at Brave New Books, Ian and I, at Brave New Books, uh, I think it was Sunday evening, and Liberty Stickers has a little display there. And I was able to check out some um, some new stickers uh, right there in real life and uh, see some old ones. Are you augmenting your remember mobile library system? <laughs> <laughs> I've got uh, I've, I've got some stickers in the car. LibertyStickers.com. So the, uh, so the unfortunately our caller who is trying to take me to task dropped. Yeah, he's gone. And but, uh, I mean. I, I will have to say that as, after some careful consideration, I will say that the caller did have a point and that I will admit that I was wrong uh, in the statement that was said in the article that I, I was sort of agreeing with that the fact that uh, that I said that hacking was inexpensive to to do. Uh, that's what the article said, that, that basically anybody, uh, you know, who was skilled enough, who had some, you know, basically low cost technology would be able to perform a hack. And and. I that's not that, true. No, I don't think that that's true. I think that hacking is actually a very expensive, expensive uh, endeavor that requires billions of dollars of infrastructure, which North Korea doesn't have, like cellular towers and fiber cables and you know cable providers and cellular internet providers and telephone service with DSL connectivity, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and they don't have it. So, no, hacking isn't cheap. It's very, very expensive if you live in a third world world country that's controlled by an extreme dictatorship. No, it's not easy to do. They could hire Chinese hackers. I sure. suspect that's what happened. If, if, anything- if it happened at all. But the IP supposedly came from within North Korea, which is patently ridiculous. If that's that's the claim, and it doesn't make any sense to me either. Um, I think that what they're what they're claiming it's inexpensive. They're probably claiming that that inexpense uh, has to do with. Well, it would be inexpensive if you're in the United States. You get a, you know, a cell phone connection or whatever, and you you know, or or you you have some sort of a, a VPN, you know, uh, on some sort of, you know 
cable well, modem <laughs> somewhere. It's like not a big cost if you're in a country that has widespread broadband adoption, which is not North Korea. Well, there you go. I was thinking uh, that um, they're, when they're talking about inexpensive, that they were probably comparing it to, say, aircraft carriers or that sort of thing. Yeah, um, sure. There's no nation on the planet that can stand up to the United States. I've seen uh, numbers like the United States could cut its military budget by 85 percent and still be number one. Right. That's a pretty staggering number. So um, this is just a new way for uh, people to, to compete with the big boy on the block. And, I mean— I mean, this North Korea hack, it would be like if people came and said, well, clearly Akko is anti-government, so therefore he must be a hacker and and conducting hacking operations from Cameroon. You know, it's like, uh, probably not. That doesn't really make much sense when, you know, you have to drive an hour to get to an internet connection. You know, doesn't, doesn't really jive. Doesn't make much sense. So you had some article on people being uh, technophobia. Is that right? Sure, techno panic. Um, I just because I think again, this is the type of reactionary uh, uh, ideas that this is uh, based on. And uh, this article is by Adam uh, Thierer or Thierer. T h i e r e r. I'm not sure how to pronounce. I don't think that. anyone cares. <laughs> well, I care. Adam does be- because he's a Adam's ri- mom cares. He writes about uh, high tech policy, cyber law, and digital economics for the Mercatus Center. So okay. I like him already. Um, the cyber. Sc- whoop! What? Uh, uh, an ad loaded. <laughs> <laughs> it's wonderful! These the, the way they pop those things up on you, isn't it? No. <laughs> Very frustrating. The cyber sky is falling. At least that's what you'd be led to believe if you follow internet policy debates these days. A veritable techno-panic mentality is increasingly on display in debates online over child safety, privacy, cybersecurity, and even copyright policy. In a new Mercatus Center white paper, paper, techno-panics threat inflation and the danger of an information technology precautionary principle, I explore why pessimistic prognostications dominate so many discussions about the future of internet and digital technology today. So people are just scared as they can possibly be they of sure are. technology. Let's go to, real quick, let's take John in New York. John, you're on Free Talk Live. Hi, I like to be talking about swatters. Uh, you know, I got swatted the other day. Squatters uh, or swatters? swatters. my house. Okay. Oh, uh, the pranksters who call in to a 911 okay. and they dispatch a SWAT team to your house. That's a heck of an April Fool's joke. Yeah. Yeah, it sucks, man. I had the face uh, and, and everything. It just sucks. And then they posted me online. Uh, I think I'm being targeted by a group of hackers. Why? Uh, they call themselves anonymous. And, anonymous uh, is, atta- is uh, targeting you? Uh, that's what they call themselves, anonymous. I'm okay. not I don't know that anonymous would deal. be. Okay, so let's, let's just assume it's hackers, some. But okay. Go ahead. Why are they targeting you? Do you have any clue? Uh, well, I was playing Call of Duty one night, and uh, I guess I beat this kid, and he was getting really mad at me. And then he started uh, saying my social security number over the microphone. I think they hacked me some big time and uh pwned headshot. I think it's just really fucked up and I think I should just kill that, that every single nigger. There we um, go. Yeah, there I'm we go. I'm going to kill every dump that. Okay. <laughs> anyway, that was somebody who apparently likes mudkips. Um, moving on. <laughs> I think it's uh, when you the swatting thing is a terrible uh, thing is when you know somebody can get uh, dispatches a SWAT team to your house, uh, but I don't think it happened to that guy. Yeah, probably not. Uh, especially since he was covering a news news story. Yeah, <laughs> we'll do that. Thanks. Um, So uh, this article goes on to explore why so many pessimistic prognostications dominate so many discussions about the future of the Internet and digital technology today and argue that these panics are typically based on irrational fears and inflated threats. Consider a few examples. At many cybersecurity hearings and events these days, various doomsayers predict an impending digital Pearl Harbor or even a cyber 9-11. Even, t- it's worse than that. They're talking about uh, you know c- c- robots taking over and killing us all. So um, yeah, that's. But I mean, in the you know in the actual like government sort of cybersecurity world, I mean that's what they're thinking is that uh, essentially these foreign hackers will shut down uh, um, 
you know, utilities, uh, power grid, that kind of thing. Well, if the power grid could be shut down by some foreign hacker, then the power grid has some real problems. Yeah, well, it does. Uh, others refer to cyber bombs, even though no one can be bombed with binary code. Debates about the media policy and online safety are also riddled with paranoia and panic. The titles of recent books about television and video game content have decried the home invasion and cultural terrorism and pleaded with multi with media creators to stop teaching our kids to kill. Also, the rise of online social network sites and a few years ago spawned a predator panic and resulted in, in proposed federal ban on access to those sites in schools and libraries, as well as a mandatory online age verification. Which sites? Uh, like Facebook, so okay. social networks. Um which was endorsed by many state officials. Subsequent research proved that this threat was wildly overblown. Meanwhile, alarmism is on the rise in privacy debates with some regulatory advocates drawing comparisons to natural disasters or environmental catastrophes such as a privacy Chernobyl or data toxic waste spills. Yeah, well, that's uh, those are the kind of terminology you'd have to do to get people all whipped right. up and scared. What are your thoughts on this? Uh, what, what, what's the techno panic that you've got? 855-450-3733. It's 855-450-3733. Free Talk Live. On Monday, Josh Liebarger made his status. Case of the Mondays. Followed by a frowny face. It got one like and five comments, including dislike. Well, Josh, Geico also wants to make a comment to turn that emoji's frown upside down. In just 15 minutes, you could save hundreds of dollars on your car insurance by switching to Geico. With all that extra dough, why not give Monday a makeover? We see an office party in your future. Hosted by you. Hashtag happy face. Hashtag savings. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Are you searching for your soulmate? Someone you can trust who will never betray you or cooperate with the NSA? Stop searching. With EasyDNS, you found a keeper. EasyDNS does it all. Domain names, web hosting, and managed WordPress hosting. EasyDNS stands up for your internet freedom. And with servers in Canada, they do not cooperate with the NSA. Go to EasyDNS.com. You'll love their services or get a full refund. They guarantee it. And they accept Bitcoin. That's EasyDNS.com. We live in a complicated society. Stressful issues are always popping up. Have you ever been treated unfairly by someone? Have you ever been overcharged for a repair? Have you ever signed a contract or a document worried about identity theft? How many times have you been in those unique situations where you just wanted to call an attorney to find out if you're right or wrong or what your legal rights are? But every time you think about calling an attorney, what do you think about first? That's right. Who do you call and how much will it cost? Our friends at Legal Shield have found a solution. With a nationwide network of 6,900 attorneys who average 19 years of experience, Legal Shield's law firms take over 40,000 calls per week helping their members. For less than $20 per month, you can have access to Legal Shield on everything from the trivial to the traumatic. Let Legal Shield stand up for your rights at lsprotection.com. That's lsprotection.com. Or call 855-340-SAVE. 855-340-7283. Results will vary from case to case. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist, libertarian community, and it's, it's only getting bigger. That's amazing. To be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do, though, is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying, let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com, 101reasonsfilm.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. 
This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. Five four five zero three seven three three. It's eight fifty five four fifty free. You can call in and talk about whatever is on your mind. The uh, phone lines are just about loaded, but uh, you can give us a call. Well, they still squeeze you in. Eight five five four five zero three seven three three. Want to tell you about our archives? We've got archives for free at archives.freetalklive.com. Going back many years, there. Uh, we make them available to you. All the other talk show hosts, they want to charge you for them, not Free Talk Live. We want you to be able to get your hands on our audio content, so we make it easy for you. Archives.freetalklive.com. It's Mark with you. And Johnson. Let's go to, I believe this is William Norman Grigg, who has graced our show with his presence. Is that correct? Good evening. I am he. Excellent. <laughs> Board up, can you turn him up a little bit? Sure. Great. Um, so I know you. Somebody told me that you'd be calling in, and I'm delighted that you that you are. But uh, it's not really for good news. No, it isn't. This deals with the case of Matthew Townsend. You probably mentioned him before. He's a cop watcher and a liberty activist from Meridian, Idaho, who experienced somewhat uh, the same kind of a technophobic reaction, if you will, using a rather lower tech. Uh, version of of approaching his activism through Facebook as opposed to hacking or cracking or otherwise infiltrating the medium that way. He posted a negative comment on Facebook having to do with a, an upcoming legal hearing, an upcoming, upcoming court hearing for a bogus charge of resisting and obstructing a police officer. And what he said is that he wanted the charge to be dropped, and there's every reason to express that opinion. And if it wasn't dropped, he said, he'd conduct against the officer. Corporal He'd conduct Richard what? Rock. I'm sorry, so you dropped out there, Will. That he would mount a legal and peaceful shame campaign. Yes, a shame words, campaign, yes. Shame. In other words, he would express himself peacefully uh, using, exercising the right to petition for redress of grievances. And this was construed as a threat that he was trying to intimidate the witness, which was Officer Richard Brockbank, who'd arrested him without cause on the 30th of January during a one-man street protest outside of the Liberty Tax Service there in Meridian. Yeah, so he's and protesting so he taxes. Uh, and I think that it's really important to point out here that the, the police officer decided that uh, he would be charged with resisting arrest for walking across the street. Um, you know, he wasn't under arrest, and so walking no. away is not illegal. But I love it when somebody's just arrested for resisting arrest. Resisting arrest for what? How can you <laughs> exactly. re resist arrest when there is no right. <laughs> other charge? It's, it's a bootstrap charge that's used when there is no other charge available to punish somebody for contempt of cop. Yep. What happened is that Matthew was crossing a, a street at an intersection there in Meridian. He was using the crosswalk. He had started across when the light changed on the crosswalk, indicating don't walk, but he was already in the crosswalk at, at this point. This is all in the report uh, filed by Richard Brockbank, the police officer who arrested him. While he's in the crosswalk, before the light changes and the traffic begins to flow, he stops for just a second and holds up his protest sign to display to the motorists. Then he proceeds across to the other side of the, of the intersection. Yep. In other words, he didn't commit a violation. He didn't jaywalk. Doesn't he didn't sound like it. Traffic. But Brockbank walked up to him, and in his report, he said he wanted to educate Matthew about the traffic laws. So this is a, a specimen of armed pedagogy, if you will. And Matthew refused to concede that he had violated the law because he hadn't violated the law. And at one point, he finally said, listen, are you going to charge me with an offense? And Brock Bank shut his mouth and didn't respond. So Matthew shrugged his shoulders and hit the crosswalk button, headed across again. Yep. And while he's in the middle of the crosswalk, the officer orders him to stop. 
which would have been the same violation that supposedly attracted the attention of, of Officer Brockbank. Right. I mean, this is a very bad idea. It's like an officer telling you to jump in front of a truck. Exactly. And so he safely uses the crosswalk for its intended purpose. And at that point, he's arrested for resisting and obstructing. And he was supposed to have a preliminary hearing on this on the 18th of March. Forgive me, the 19th of March. The day before that hearing, he posts this message on Facebook saying that he would use peaceful and legal means to shame, assuming, of course, that Brockbank is capable of shame, <laughs> Officer Brockbank and his associates, but they didn't drop the charge. And so he shows up for his preliminary hearing, and he's informed that the city prosecutor, or the prosecutor representing the city Meridian, wanted to vacate his bond and have him charged with a felony and arrested by the Ada County Sheriff's deputies while he was at the hearing. And the judge who's hearing this motion, the magistrate by the name of James Coffin, looked at the evidence and said, there's no evidence here of a threat. I'm not going to vacate bond. Right, because there I'm wasn't a threat. To... The judge exactly. said there's not a threat. Yeah. And this is set for a, a, a supplementary hearing on the 30th of March. The prosecutor was supposed to prepare a motion to provide to the defense attorney the following Monday. But rather than doing this, the prosecutor went to the Ada County Prosecutor's Office there was an ex parte hearing before a different judge. They went judge shopping. An arrest warrant on a felony was obtained, and Matthew was arrested after dark on a Friday night on the assumption, I believe, that they were going to hold him through the weekend, ah. which would probably have caused him to lose his job. Fortuitously, his mother was able to bail him out, but he now faces two criminal trials, one dealing with resisting and obstructing for doing something that was not illegal and not resisting arrest. And if you read the the arrest report, it's pretty clear that he didn't do anything to resist the arrest, although he had the legal and moral right to do so because this was an unlawful arrest. And also for felony intimidation of a state's witness, which is a charge that carries a potential five-year prison term and a $50,000 fine. And the act of intimidation, supposedly, consisted of exercising his right to petition for redress of grievances in a Facebook post in which he threatened, quote-unquote, to use peaceful and legal means to express his opinion. You can't threaten somebody by promising to do something that's peaceful and legal. Right. And in order to intimidate a witness under the case law here in the state of Idaho, you have to be threatening somebody or using violence against somebody who's a potential witness for the express and explicit in, uh, uh, intent of preventing that witness from testifying. There are actually cases, precedents here in the state of Idaho, that include actual threats of violence. On one, in, on one occasion, there was a witness who was sleeping in her living room, and two men broke into her home. One of them put a gun against her face and warned that she was going down. And this is somebody who was going to testify against a relative of these two. And the Court of Appeals of the state of Idaho ruled that because there was no explicit connection between that crime and the objective of deterring her from testifying, that they couldn't be convicted of witness intimidation. They could be convicted of assault with a deadly weapon. They could be convicted of burglary or trespassing aggravated assault, but they couldn't be convicted of witness intimidation because all the elements of that offense had not been present in the actions uh, that, that, that had been alleged and demonstrated in court. So it's ludicrous so, to assume that somehow these were, uh, you know, a present in Matthew Townsend's case when he never not. even threatened anybody. No, he's never threatened anybody. He's not a violent person. He's a peace activist. What he said in his Facebook post, as Judge Coffin pointed out in the preliminary hearing here, was an exercise of First Amendment-protected political speech. And this is something that I find quite provocative here in that he, he issued an order, Judge Cawthon issued an order that the prosecutor was supposed to prepare for a March 30th hearing and supposed to be briefing the case and providing this motion to the defense attorney and so forth. He actually issued an order here, and that court order was ignored by the prosecutor. And under the rules that govern the district court in Boise, and the rules that govern the conduct of prosecutors professionally, it's pretty clear that not only was this a, an act of professional malfeasance on the part of the prosecutor, a young man by the name of Abby Germain, or young woman rather by the name of Abby Germain, but it's quite possibly an act of criminal contempt. Uh, the statutes here in the state of Idaho make it clear that you can't simply ignore an order that's issued by a judge. But they ignored that order and they went judge shopping, judge shopping and, yeah. they found, and they found a compliance judge who was able to, who was willing to issue this this warrant because there was no defense attorney there to represent the case and the, uh, represent the interests of the defendant, rather. And the prosecutor didn't see fit to share with that magistrate what had just transpired a couple of hours earlier in a court uh, uh, that was presided over by 
this is an interesting fact as well. One of the two magistrates that deal with domestic violence cases in Ada County. So you're dealing here with somebody who has a unique set of competencies regarding the questions of threats and intimidation and stalking and all these things that would be relevant to the question of whether he's actually trying to intimidate or coerce somebody. And you're dealing once again with a police officer. Somebody goes to work swaddled in body armor, uh, his uh, belt's groaning beneath the weight of every kind of implement of, of violence and mayhem that you can imagine, and more importantly, clothed in the, the mystical cloak of qualified immunity, which means that he gets to initiate violence, not be held legally responsible for doing so. If this is the sort of a person who could be intimidated from testifying by the supposed threat of somebody doing something peaceful and legal, this is somebody, obviously, who's not in any way qualified to be a peace officer, let alone a law enforcement officer. William Norman and Gregg, all, what can people do? There is a Facebook page, page uh, Free Matthew Townsend at Facebook, or hashtag Free Matt. We're going to be posting news and updates and information about his upcoming legal travails. And by all means, visit that page and get the word out. I will go ahead and share that on our Facebook page. Thanks so much. It's Free Matthew Townsend on Facebook, right? That's correct. Free and, Matthew Townsend. And what is it on Twitter? Hashtag Free Matt. Free Matt. Excellent. Thanks so much for the call, William Norman Gregg. When the leading antihistamine and Nasacort go nose to nose, Nasacort wins. Stopping more of the chemical responses that can cause your nasal allergy symptoms. And when you stop more causes, you get 24 hour relief from sneezing, an itchy runny nose, even congestion. It's prescription strength medicine available over the counter. Nasacort Allergy 24 Hour stops more of what makes you miserable. Uses directed. Indefinite extension of the human lifespan is coming. But is it coming soon enough for you and me? That's the $80,000 question. I say $80,000 because that's what it costs to have your head cryonically frozen by Alcor. I've committed to do it. I got a life insurance policy, and I made them the uh, beneficiaries. Bam. My best shot at living forever. Interested? Contact them at alcor.org. A-L-C-O-R dot O-R-G. Mention my name, and I get a free year of membership. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Tuesday, March 31st, 2015. Gold is trading at $1,188, silver at $16.75, and Bitcoin is trading around $245.90. Today's Bitcoin price is brought to you by ExpressCoin, the fastest, most reliable way to buy Bitcoin. Buy Bitcoin today at ExpressCoin.com. In the news, new revelations in the Silk Road saga have the potential to change the fate of Ross Ulbricht, the accused mastermind of the online marketplace. On Friday, two former undercover federal agents were arrested for stealing Bitcoin from the Silk Road throughout the course of their investigation. Carl Mark Force, an officer with the DEA, was charged with wire fraud, theft of government property, money laundering, and is accused of selling information about the government's investigation into the Silk Road. Force also played a key role in bringing murder for hire charges against Ulbricht, charges that Ulbricht will soon face in Maryland. His mother, Lynn Ulbricht, told the Daily Dot the revelations of corruption cast doubt on the integrity of the entire investigation and the government's case. 
Tomorrow morning, the Houston City Council will vote on whether or not to spend nearly $500,000 on Stingray cell phone surveillance equipment. The council's vote comes just days after Houston Police Chief Charles McClelland refused to confirm or deny the department's use of the tools. Despite McClellan's lack of answers, public records show the department has been using the devices for several years. Stingrays, or cell site simulators, allow law enforcement to indiscriminately gather information about cell phone calls, including location, length of calls, numbers dialed, and, with newer models, the actual contents of the conversations. Activists and privacy advocates will visit the city council this afternoon to express their opposition to the purchase. 1,500 Californians joined the Electronic Freedom Foundation to defeat an effort by government officials in the state to allow the Department of Motor Vehicles to share licensed photos with law enforcement. The California Law Enforcement Transportation Communication Advisory Committee was expected to allow driver's license images to be forwarded to law enforcement facial recognition databases around the U.S. EFF says it continues to monitor the activities of the committee. Specifically, their goal is to include the collection of biometric information for minor legal infractions and tracking offenders with GPS systems. The Liberty Beat is sponsored in part by CoinArch, offering innovative trading solutions for Bitcoin. Do more than just buy and sell Bitcoin. Use long and short positions to profit in rising and falling markets and boost your returns through leverage. Visit CoinArch.com and sign up using coupon code LIBERTY and get free brokerage for the first 14 days. This is the Liberty Beat for Tuesday, March 31st, 2015. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. On Monday, the Supreme Court denied an appeal from former California high school students who were forced to turn their American flag t-shirts inside out during a Cinco de Mayo celebration at school. The appeal was denied without any comment from the justices. The students were originally told the administrators were worried about inciting trouble from students celebrating the Mexican holidays. When the students brought the case to court, it was denied after the judge ruled that the fear of racial violence outweighed the possible infringement of freedom of speech. Negotiations between the United States and Iran are set to come to an end today. U.S. negotiators are working to convince Iran's leadership to halt their nuclear program in exchange for relief from U.S. sanctions. If no deal is reached, it will be seen by many as a failure on the Obama administration's part. Success could mean stability in the Middle East and a shrinking nuclear missile threat. Spain's three new anti-terror laws are not scheduled to go into effect until July 1. But they already have human rights groups up in arms. The Penal Code, the new anti-terror law, and the Law on Citizen Safety were recently approved by the Spanish Congress. Critics say the laws are an attack on freedom of expression online and in the streets. The Citizen Safety Law, nicknamed the Gag Law, will criminalize public protests, free speech, freedom of the press, and filming police. The laws also legalize blacklists for protesters, activists, and press, as well as random identity checks. On the internet, the gag law will criminalize tweets calling for protests or rallies. The Liberty Beat is brought to you by Midas Resources Incorporated, helping clients convert their paper 401ks and IRAs to solid gold and silver. Get your 10 Reasons book free by calling 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. This is The Liberty Beat for Tuesday, March 31st, 2015. I'm Brian Hagen reporting. Reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. This is the Onion Week in Review. Researchers at the University of Washington report that they have successfully trained seven-year-old chimpanzee Makoko to do all of the tasks necessary to conduct a three-year study on primates. According to the scientists, Makoko has efficiently learned to turn in thorough analyses of behavior in chimpanzees, fill out all of the necessary paperwork to ensure compliance with the Animal Welfare Act, and even apply for supplemental grant funding from the National Institutes of Health. Sources within your office reported today that the guy on the third floor with two computers screens on his desk is not f***ing around. Co-workers said that the man, currently working with at least three programs open on each screen, was absolutely tearing it up, with sources adding that watching the man run a group video chat while dragging two separate Google documents to his second screen was like something out of f***ing Minority Report or something. Jesus, he's just dragging things from one screen to the other like it's nothing. He's going balls to the wall over there. Christ, man, I don't think he's blinked in three minutes. This is the Onion News Network.
Free Talk Live, 855-450 free. It's 855-450-3733. You can call in, talk about whatever is on your mind. We just got a call from William Norman Grigg talking about the arrest of this uh, activist in uh, Idaho for uh, uh, basically nothing, from what I can tell. Um, uh, the the story is actually over at photographyisnotacrime.com. Um, you can find out, I guess the hashtag on Twitter is uh, free Matt. It's uh, on Facebook. It's uh, free Matthew Townsend. And uh, you can find the Facebook page. And, you know, they're trying to get some support out there. I sincerely hope they can find it. It's kind of a crazy uh, story, frankly. Let's go to your calls. Nick in California. Nick, you're on Free Talk Live. What's on your mind, sir? Hey, what's going on, Mark? Um, I just wanted to call in because uh, I've seen a lot of stuff lately about, like, gay rights and stuff on the news. And personally, you know, I've always thought that gay people, you know, should generally be able to do, you know, whatever they want. I mean, you know, you, you can it's your butthole. It's your decision to do what you want with it. But, I mean, lately I've been seeing, you know, a lot of stuff about, um, you know, like gay people raising children and stuff. And I was just really curious about what your guys' thoughts on that issue are. Because, What's the question? I mean, first, well, what what do you think about uh, gay couples raising children? I think that uh, that uh, you know children need loving families, no matter what that loving family is. Um, there's no such thing as a perfect family. So to uh, single out one particular aspect of a family that might not be optimal, I think is uh, you know is, is really kind of ludicrous. So I'd, I'd like to see the perfect family. Yeah, yeah, I understand that, and I mean, I, I understand that. I, I guess there should be some. There could be some gay couples that would raise. A child, you know, better than, you know, some straight couples that have a man and a woman involved. But I think just generally that for a child growing up, I think it's important for it to have, you know, that aspect of the masculine and the feminine. And, well, I I understand where you're coming from with the perfect family. It's certainly, you know, very rare to see something even close to a perfect family nowadays. But what about uh, um, what about uh, families where there is no uh, father? Yeah. Yeah. I see where you're coming from there too, but I mean, I just think generally, um, you know, I, I don't know. I just don't, don't really. I think it's like a step in a, a bad direction for our society to be endorsing that sort of a thing. Because I just think is the healthiest option for a child would be to have uh, a man and a woman involved in raising it. And I understand that, you know, I mean, that's you don't really get that all the time. But you don't get that most just, of the, a lot of the time. And um, you know, I wouldn't, in the same way, I wouldn't advocate for taking children away from uh, women who don't have a man in the house. I wouldn't advocate uh, for not giving children over to couples who, uh, you know, might be of the same sex. All right, all right. Well, that's that's fair, and um, it's not a deeply strong, you know, um, concept that I, I've been thinking about for a long time. It's just sort of a thought that crossed my mind while I was thinking about it today. But, Excellent. You know, I thanks bye. for the call, Nick. Really appreciate it. 855 free Hey, you know, I think that that this... guy must have very weird stoner conversations. <laughs> well, <laughs> hey, that's not I think that's not what most people think about when they're sitting around getting high. But, you know, Free Talk Live is the place for you to call in about the things you're thinking about. I mean, that's what it comes up to. Now, he asked me what my opinion was, and I'm happy to give it to him. Um, you know, if not, I'm going to sit here and I'm going to ask some questions. I'm just going to go ahead and say not enough kids get adopted. And a family is better than no family. And, you know. Anyway, <laughs> there are kids. Um, there are kids in this country that uh, you know really could use a, a family, and it can be difficult for um, you know for couples of the same sex to to, to get them. Many countries um, aren't going to be interested in you know sort of the foreign adoption thing isn't going to really work out very well for these couples, so they're um, often left to taking care of the kids uh, that you know need it the most. And I suppose that that's a good thing. But if somebody says that they want a kid and they're willing to take care of some, that's entirely different than the commitment level it takes to have sex and accidentally have a child, right? Right. There's just 
I don't know. You said the foreign adoption thing wouldn't work out, and I'm already thinking it's like I personally know a gay couple who has a Russian adopted son. Okay, so. I, I just I just guessed that that wouldn't be the case. Russia Which has certainly wouldn't happen these days because Russia won't allow Americans to adopt. Uh, Russian children anymore. So yeah, but Russia has sort of been shown um, on the news has been talked about as being sort of anti-homosexual. I was surprised to hear yeah. just now that you said that. So you know that was just a guess. So anyway, um, yeah, I think that when you're talking about loving families, um, there's. Do I think that the perfect family is probably some kind of nuclear family with a husband and wife? I suppose you might be able to pry that out of me, but I also think that the grandmothers and grandfathers are all present too. People die. People leave families for whatever reason. People have, you know, alcoholism. People just have bad personalities. These are the realities that are, we're dealing with. And to suggest to point out one thing, which is that the couples has, you know, a same sex couple as opposed to a, uh, you know, different sex couple, is to, to, you know, in my opinion, just harp on one particular issue. And it shows the prurient kind of obsession of this nation with sex. Right. That's, you know, it's just more of this same old stuff over and over, um, you know, this this Victorian obsession with the naughty. It sounds um, like some of the same reasons that uh, inspire Techno Panic. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we were talking about Techno Panic and you were uh, discussing that article, so I'd like to continue with that if you'd like. Sure. So uh, the author of this article goes on to say, such paranoia and fears, the, the ones that drive techno panic, are often driven by the fact that humans are both naturally risk averse and poor judges of risks. You were both of those, yes. Yeah. Thus, the survival instinct combined with poor comparative risk analysis skills lead many people to engage in or buy into techno panics. But other factors are often at work. Is this kind of like uh, Y2K? Would that be considered a techno panic? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. But so there, this is when everybody thought that the whole world was going to come crashing down because that's of- That's ext- I think that's sort of extreme techno panic. But the other thing is like techno panics, like was mentioned earlier in the article, is like, there are predators on Facebook. Don't let your kids near the Facebooks or they're going to get raped by predators. It's like, what? That's not happening. You know, I, like, but well, like I mean, that's it, like extremely. I mean, it's, it's happened happening like, often enough. like one or two. It's sort of like there are razor blades in your child's candy. Like, well, no, that that, you know, they thought that was happening since like the early '80s or whatever, and it's like it didn't happen not even once uh, until like the I think there late might have been 2010s. Some, or yes, like you're that. right. Some documented yeah. case after somebody said there's been no documented cases. Right. Um. And, and you know, like anybody can slide a razor into their candy and say that this happened, right? Or into right. an apple or something. Who gives an apple out to kids on Halloween? Yeah. An apple orchard? I mean, is that it? <laughs> I don't know. People, uh, dentists. I uh, wish somebody would give an apple out to my kid on Halloween instead of a bag full of candy. <laughs> so, okay, so he gets into, uh, finally here, and he, he, this guy, the same guy wrote an actual paper about it. So this is just sort of an article that's about the paper, which, of course, is much better format for radio. Um, but gets into these six reasons why uh, people fall into these techno panics. So the first reason, and I think this is a good first reason, generational differences. General different, generational differences often motivate pessimistic attitudes about the impact of technology on culture and society. Parents and policymakers who dread the changes to cultural or privacy-related norms ushered in by new technological advances often forget that they, too, were children once and heard similar complaints from their elders about the gadgets and content of their generations. Uh, I, I'll never be able to forget the whole thing about Dungeons and Dragons. Right. God, well, this is the most annoying, crazy thing that went on sort of in the mid 80s. The idea right. that kids were going, you know, that they were being driven crazy by some books, right. some silly games. Right. I mean, it, it just it makes no sense at all. All right, uh, but they but they believed it. I went to a Christian school in Bradenton, Florida, in the mid '80s, and I can tell you that there was a teacher there that would he made a big deal out of the whole Satan getting you over Dungeons and Dragons. Well, thing. wasn't it also thinking about the Model T, like you know, oh, if you go more than 38 miles an hour, you're gonna die. <laughs> you know, like wiring in houses. They were yeah. afraid who would run electricity through your walls. You'll set everything on fire. <laughs> I mean, you know, now we look back and we say it's ludicrous. Yep. 
Here's a special message for those of you who owe the IRS at least 10000 or more in back taxes. The IRS has special programs in place that could eliminate or reduce your tax debt by thousands of dollars. Call the tax helpline that has been set up to help you. 800-691-6129. That's 800-691-6129. Stop the wage garnishments, levies, and tax liens now. Once you've qualified and enrolled, the IRS will stop all the collection activities against you. These unique programs have been allocated to help the economy and significantly reduce or eliminate your tax burden. The IRS is currently accepting reduced settlements and other favorable programs. You may qualify for substantial savings, so get the help you need. For free information and to see if you qualify, take down the number now for the Tax Representation Hotline. 800-691-6129. That's 800-691-6129. 800 691 6129. Hi, this is Mark Edge, host of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the very. With a printing press tethered to Washington politicians, bureaucrats, and central bankers, how can we put our trust in paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Come see gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold. With Washington, D.C. delivering more debt and printed promises, common sense tells us the future of the trend is obvious. Everyone listening should visit gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938. I trust Midas Resources for my gold, silver, platinum, and you can too. Again, I want you to have this book. And it's free. It's gold.freetalklive.com or 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. Do you know the difference between erudite and pedantic? If you do, you're probably pedantic. But seriously, a surprising number of erudite people mispronounce erudite, which has three syllables, not four. Say erudite, not erudite. Because you are judged by how you speak, you want to avoid common misstatements, especially if you're a job seeker. For instance, do you know the difference between imply and infer? Only a speaker can imply. Only a listener can infer. And when you say you'll be out of pocket, do you mean out of touch? Out of pocket means you're on your own dime, not yet reimbursed. And if anyone ever asks, why do you always answer a question with a question? You should reply, do I do that? Just kidding. From survivalspeech.com, I'm Holland Cook. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. When I found the Free State Project, I knew it was the key to achieving liberty in my lifetime. It's awesome to be surrounded by like-minded, freedom-loving activists who've moved here to New Hampshire. From politics to civil disobedience, we have it all. Where I came from, it felt that no matter what I did, liberty was dying. Perhaps you feel the same way? Call 888-377-2515 now to learn more about the Free State Project. That's 888-377-2515 or visit freestateproject.org. Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit promote.lrn.fm for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, 855-450 free. It's 855-450-3733. You can call in, talk about whatever's on your mind on this live edition of Free Talk Live. It's Mark with you. And Johnson. 855-450-3733. You need legal documents to live life. Sorry to say, um, you know, the government and other people are going to demand these things from you. You may not like it, but other people are going to demand it. So, for instance, powers of attorney. 
Um, power of attorneys? I'm not sure. Is it powers of attorney or power of attorneys? I think it's powers of attorney. <laughs> anyway. Sounds like a super power. Something. People are going to want that little... Little powers of attorney music for you there yeah. um and wills uh you know these kind of things living trusts living wills uh trademarks patents llc's prenups you're gonna need all these documents and it costs a lot of money to get a lawyer to draw them up for you you can do it at legalzoom.com yourself what they do is they ask you questions they're not attorneys they but they ask you questions and then from the answers to your questions they draw up these documents and they've been you know accepted in all 50 states they are um, you know just a really great way to save some money use coupon code FTL and save ten dollars more it's legalzoom.com coupon code FTL let's go to Scott calling in from St George Utah. Scott, you're on Free Talk Live. What's on your mind? Hey, guys. Uh, I just wanted to let you know about this documentary about North Korea. There's a bunch um, of them. Yeah, it's this one that's totally different than any other one I've ever seen. Okay. It's, it's not so much about the government. It's about this, uh, re- this basically libertarians in North Korea that live by the South Korea border, and they sneak out every week or so, and they sneak back into North Korea with backpacks full of laptops and cell phones that pick up Internet from South Korea and all. Wow. Interesting. You're telling me somebody sneaks, them. somebody sneaks out of North Korea and goes back? Yeah, they sneak out once a week. They, they get about 10 guys to sneak back in backpacks full of laptops. Well, I heard there's really a guy, and this might be this documentary, that I heard that there's a guy who's trying to set up a thing to sneak stuff like that in with, by balloon. I'm sure that's happening too, but you, you got to check this one out. It's by the time you get done watching it, you pretty much know that Kim Jong Un is not going to last very long. Like the people are going to overthrow him in the next ten years. Well, what's the name of it? They just talk about. It. Uh, it's called something along the lines of Inside the Real North Korea. It's available on Netflix. Netflix. Something like that. Inside I have to check that out. You sound like you're in a balloon, though. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's really windy here right now. So yeah. <laughs> So what did um, I, I'm just stunned at the idea that there are people sneaking out and sneaking back in on a regular basis and not getting caught and going to some kind of gulag. Yeah, they they go through some gnarly stuff. It shows the whole process. So it interviews the people. They're basically libertarians in North America or in North Korea. I mean, pretty intense. Do you know if this group of this and organization they, is the Link Group called Liberty in North Korea? Uh, Something like that, yeah. It's something along those lines. Because Link has actually been here to Keene to visit. They've actually come to, to speak and have like an event here. So that's well, be Scott, um, but, I'm not able to find it by searching inside the real North Korea movie um, on Google. So will you do me a favor and email me the, uh, you know, what the name of the movie is and some kind of link or whatever for information so that I can post it on our Facebook page? Yeah, no problem. I'll post, I'm on the Facebook page too. I'll just post it when I get home. I'll probably forget. Uh, I mean, if, if I don't see it, I'll <laughs> email is best. Yeah, email it to me and then post it, and that way I can um, make sure it gets uh, you know top billing. Okay, sounds good. Thanks so much. It's Mark at FreeTalkLive.com. Appreciate the call, Scott. Eight five five four five zero three seven three three. Yep, I really do try to answer those emails. Yep. Um, do my very, very very best. Technophobia. Sure. So the first reason, so this is uh, the six things that drive uh, technophobia. This is an, artic- uh, an article here uh, from Forbes.com. Um, the first is uh, was generational di- differences, which you know, we're just discussing these sort of cycles of juvenoia or exaggerated anxiety about the influence of social change on children and youth that repeat endlessly and drive panics from one generation to the next. Um, My son Jack uh, watches some videos on YouTube, mm-hmm. usually about Minecraft, right? which I find to be just, b- why are you spending your time doing this? But uh-huh. whatever, that's his business. He gets a, he gets a, I think it's two hours a day on media and that's his screen time. And I don't know if that's a lot or a little or what. Uh, I think it's difficult to know, but I can no tell you. No child of mine would have limited screen time. <laughs> well, I, I got to say that uh, I think that if I didn't do that, he would spend all of his time looking at a screen. And that's the way I would want it. <laughs> well, I find it frightening. Anyway, um, he goes on there and then, like these, he'll watch these videos and sometimes these guys will say words that I wish they didn't say. Ah, right? uh, like, yes. Hey, sure. my seven-year-old's watching this yeah. video. 
I wonder to myself what the benefit of freaking out over it is, right? right. So um, if he doesn't seem, he doesn't use that language. He doesn't hear us using it. Um, you know, if he if he hears daddy cussing, it's because he was uh, paying attention, you know, sometime when uh, daddy didn't know he was around. Right. Like I've never I haven't really slipped up in front of him. Um, but uh, and his mother just gener- generally doesn't do that. So have you gone and, and reprimanded Glorious Coconut to his face? I'm not sure who Glorious Coconut is. Is that one of these uh, p- people that does a video game show? Yeah, it just happens to be one of our friends here in Keene who, no, does, who does Minecraft videos. So. Oh, does he? <laughs> and, uh, I, you know, what I'm one time he was on and he was looking about dinosaurs. Um, you know, he'll do this stuff. He'll go on like a jag of looking at uh, certain things. Right now it's Minecraft. And previously it was dinosaurs. Right. And so he was looking at all the videos he could find about dinosaurs. And at some point or another he comes up with this video of this preacher guy talking about how dinosaurs lived as recently as the middle ages and um you know he had a big dinosaur bone in front of him and like a uh the shell of like the the plate of a stele- uh a stegosaurus and like the the spike from a stegosaurus and a, and a few things just to sort of props right for the, the churchy kids to look at right and these are the things that jack wanted to see he wanted to see these props right and this guy's talking about things that i consider to be contrafactual if you uh to be as nice as i possibly could okay. um i don't want jack taught that dinosaurs were living as recently as six or <laughs> seven hundred years ago right because and and i i just don't think that's acceptable now for some reason i think it's acceptable to you know talk about nessie the uh the loch ness monster right. p- perhaps being a plesiosaur but I don't find it acceptable when there's this sort of, uh, you know, religious dogma that goes along right. with it. And I suspect those are my own innate uh, b- bigotries, right? Right. Well, if Nessie's a plesiosaur, then it was definitely less than 600 or 700 years ago. <laughs> this week. Um, <laughs> and so I I just tried to stop that video, right? Like, I'm like, sure. you are not going to watch this video. Right. And that went really badly. Yeah. Like, Jack, you know, felt, uh, uh, you know, a sick of uh, a sense of lack Right. right, like something has been taken from me, right. and uh, you know that didn't, you know, like you know the, the, the screaming, the crying, and, right. and then whatever he did, and uh, you know it was not, it was not great. Right, and so I have since then been, uh, you know, loath to jump in because I can see what can happen as a result, right. uh, especially if I'm, it's sort of my triggers, um, you know, mm-hmm. he's going to learn these words at some point anyway. Uh, it's really my job to make sure that he doesn't use them in polite company and specifically in front of his mother, right? Right. 855-450-3733. What are your thoughts? 855-450-FREE. By now you may have heard a bit about bitcoins, but did you know bitcoins are now over an $8.5 billion market? And did you know that over 65,000 businesses now accept bitcoins? Listen, if you're already earning bitcoins or trying to make money in the bitcoin market, you've got to know bidbit.co. Why? Because bidbit.co is where you can easily receive bitcoins by selling and auctioning off your own personal items or promote business products and services for bitcoins. You heard right. Whether personal or business, you can now buy, sell, and auction your products and services quickly, easily, and securely for Bitcoin at BidBit.co, the first and only marketplace website to offer BidBit escrow, a proprietary technology which gives buyers and sellers security and peace of mind because all transactions are protected. Start today. It's free to join, free to post, free to auction, and free to bid at BidBit.co. Buy, sell, bid, or auction everything Bitcoin. That's www.bidbit.co. Bidbit.co. Free Talk Live. You're a privilege to drive the road. You must follow the law. No, I don't have to. Are you going to make a you're but a double park and you're going to make a left hand turn in front of a cop? Can I respond to you here, Barbara? Do right ahead. I'm not going to run a red light in front of a cop because he has a gun and is willing to hurt me, but I've run plenty no, of. Wrong. Wrong. He's not going to hurt you. He's going to give you a ticket. Oh, but if I decide not to pull over, what will he do? Well, that you're not obeying the law. Barbara, I don't obey arbitrary words written down by strangers. I well, obey that's... natural law, Barbara. That means if I do something, I expect consequences will come from that, sometimes right. good, you sometimes bad. You want a red bad. light, somebody comes around and you kill them. You're not, I would never run a red light like that. that. When I run a red light, I stop first, look around, make sure no one is uh, is, oh, is in danger, we, and then oh, I go you, through. Oh, 
Oh, you are such a phony. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Nestle Tollhouse Morsels, helping you create special moments and memories your family will cherish forever. Visit us at tollhouse.com. You may bake for birthdays and holidays, but why stop there? Sweeten up the rest of the year by designating monthly dessert days. Treat your family to one of their favorites or surprise them with something new. Either way, you'll create a tradition everyone will love. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone. 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. I've been told no in many different ways. I give you an order and you're going to obey it. Who told you can go this way? You can do that and you have to leave here. You cannot reach Simon to the rally. Well, I'm, I'm, no, I'm comfortable here, actually. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, hey, hey. Who do you think Excuse you are? Excuse me. There is no video or audio allowed in this. No, I have work today. This is you ain't gonna make. Wait, now. Wait a minute. Whoa. Hey! Oh my God! Unbelievable! Why are you running from me? Because you're scared of me. What am I being now? You're being served. What is this? You're being served. What is this? Bureaucrats have a funny way of telling people no. That's the sound of the men working on the chain. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, 855-450-FREE. It's 855-450-3733. You can call in and talk about whatever's on your mind this edition of Free Talk Live. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. We have links there to Amazon and other major retailers, and the reason that we'd prefer you to do it that way is, is because we get a little little bonus if you go there. You get the same price as the same service if you use shop.freetalklive.com. It's an extra click for your shopping. I know that. But it helps us to offset the dangers of doing a radio program that is much different than the other radio programs you hear on the air. The opinions you hear on Free Talk Live... The, the, you don't hear those elsewhere on the mm. radio, and the, oftentimes the, uh, the you know the, the conservative marketplace tends to punish that. I'm not talking about conservative between conservative and liberal. What I'm talking about is is that you know there's some things that it's, it's acceptable to say um, for businesses. You know businesses are find that acceptable, and there's things that it isn't. Most of talk radio right now is being punished for. Things that have been said in the past. Uh, Rush Limbaugh calling that uh, Sandra Fluke gal a slut really didn't go well for talk radio, and that's been a couple of years now. I frankly don't think that uh, ad revenue is coming back to talk radio until Rush retires. And <laughs> that's doesn't there doesn't seem to be any indication. <laughs> you think Rush it. Limbaugh is single handedly holding down the radio industry? Well, he single handedly well, brought it up. That's what's in broadcasting. <laughs> wow. I, he single handedly brought it up. He gets the credit for bringing it to where it is. Why can't he get the credit for? Is he, is he really? It down? It's not a who who Howard. I invented radio. Well, um, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I don't know where uh, Howard Stern. Howard Stern was on t- uh, rock and roll stations. Some, yeah, but not talk like, stations. Uh, what K N E W or whatever it was in New York? Like, yeah, well, he was on rock stations. I mean, he was he's a rock host. Sure. Uh, no, he did a talk show. He did a talk show on sure, rock stations. on rock stations. Sure, because so, well, his flagship station. Was his rock demographics, uh, you know, leaned that way. So that's a. I'm, I think that's a good thing for those stations to have done. But he wasn't on AM talk. Right. And Free yeah. Talk Live. The vast majority of our stations are AM or. 
a, um, FM translators of we AM stations. We bridged the gap. Yeah. FM, AM, hot talk, news I don't talk, think we're free talk any, live. Any more than any other talk show. <laughs> I we do. Certainly, we certainly uh, you know, have some good podcast numbers. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We're talking about technophobia. So the second reason here on this list, again, the first reason was uh, generational differences. The second reason, kind of related, hyper-nostalgia. Ah, the good old days. You remember them, right? In reality, they never existed. Yet excessive nostalgia about the mythical bygone eras often explains the hostility to many forms of technological change. Michael Shermer, the author of The Believing Brain, refers to this tendency to remember past events as being more positive than they actually were, as rosy retrospection bias. So, Speaking of days gone by, if you want to hear more of Michael Shermer, go to guests.freetalklive.com. Many years ago, he was a guest on this very show. Is that so? That's so. Um, yeah, this sounds like, you remember how we uh, you know, got in trouble with mom and dad and got our butts beat? Yeah. Yeah. Like, you know, there was that, that was a... You know, it's remembered well, even though it was probably not so great at the time. Sure. That's uh, one thing. That's also a psychological bias to the brain protecting itself. So uh, I've read this book called uh, Vitalize Simple Truths, The Psychology of Self-Deception, where people, you know, that's one of the common ones. Mommy and daddy beat me because they love me. Well, I'm not saying that in that way. What I'm saying is, is that one can look at a situation that was at the time not so great and look back at it with uh, fondness and sure. nostalgia. Sure, sure. So many critics fear how technological evolution changes the old order, traditional values, settled norms, traditional business models, and existing institutions, even as the standard of living generally improves uh, with each uh, passing generation. We see this in debates about privacy when critics yearn for the supposed solitude of the past, or in copyright debates when critics bemoan the loss of record stores and traditional methods of experiencing music. So, you know, that's- I remember going to record stores and this was awesome, right? Like I'd go to the mall. <laughs> the first place I'd go is Camelot <laughs> Music and I'd go and I'd check my little spots. Oh, it's so great. Ah, Spotify. <laughs> Get an account. I'm not saying that uh, I don't think these are superior. I just, I, you know, kids don't have that experience anymore for Ugh. whatever reason. Oh, I hated record stores. I mean, you know, the only thing here, here's my nostalgia for the past mixtapes. Those were kind of cool. Like literally cassette tapes. I, you know, there's something nice about having that physical object that you could hand to someone and say, "Here it is." I mean, I know now you can have, you can give a mix, mix a jump drive, just, a jump drive, sure. But there's still really, there's just not that like crafted feel yeah. to a mix anymore. Okay, so moving on. Next reason: bad news sells. Many media outlets and sensationalist uh, sensationalist authors sometimes use fear-based tactics to gain influence or sell books. Fear-mongering and prophecies of doom are always effective media tactics. Alarmism helps break through all the noise and get heard. This is particularly true as it relates to kids and online safety, where porn and predator panics have dominated media coverage. Hmm. Let's go to James calling in from Arizona. James, you're on Free Talk Live. What's on your mind? James? You. Yes. Hey, uh, Johnson, speaking of nostalgia, I never got to compliment you for knowing the difference between the Stop Free Keen and Free Keen Facebook pages. Anyway, uh, uh, Minister Mark, I hate him. I hate him. Edgington, speaking of knowing you by your fruit. Uh, that you like to, I mean, you brought up Mahatma Gandhi when you, after you dumped my call and made fun of me, one of the most overrated human beings to ever walk this earth, who did nothing good for his country, let alone mankind. And, and if you ask me, but it's funny you uh, idolize somebody that did nothing while uh, the, ja- the evil empire of Japan was trying to bust into India through Burma. And your uncle could have just as well died in Burma as he did on Omaha Beach just as my dad could have just died, just as well died in Burma as Omaha Beach. But that disgusting man was weaving and preaching peace and love and doing nothing about murderers on his doorstep. Well, you and, Mag- you and Gandhi ask- share something in common, though, right, Wit? Not at all. Yeah, you're both bigots. I don't bigots. know what you mean by that. Don't call you're me. Both oh, really? bigots. Back it up. Back it up. And so, then let me respond. Anybody can but go, I do, anybody I can do, go I do, listen I do, to I, your, I, your calls to the show. Back it up. Back it up for the listeners that haven't listened to this show. Back it up and then let me respond. 
But I can say one thing for sure that listeners to your show can hear for sure to quote one Johnson Rice. I'm a bigot. I'll admit it. I'm a bigot. I can give you the date off the top of my head if you want me to, but I'm not going to bother. But back it up, Johnson. You call me a bigot. Oh, I know exactly what he's referring to. I pre- Back it up, I pre- for the call, James. <laughs> I prejudge religious folks, just like he prejudges, prejudges when he's oh. talking about uh, Israelis. You know? Well, um, yeah, there you go. I'm not going to obsess backed it up. on the things that uh, <laughs> James says. Yeah. So, you know, and, and people can go and, and obsessively research James if they so feel like doing that, like he does. Um, but moving on to talking about techno panic. Yeah. Um, Speaking of, this is kind of an interesting one to to move on to, uh, the role of special interests. Many groups and institutions exaggerate fears and agitate for action because they benefit from it either directly by getting more resources from government, the public, and other benefactors, or indirectly from the glow of publicity that their alarmism generates. Many companies who also overhype various online concerns and then overplay the benefits of their particular tool as a silver bullet solution to online porn, privacy, or cybersecurity concerns. Again, bad news sells, and in this case, it sells products and services to fearful citizens. Now, this is one thing, when, uh, for instance, with this, uh, this this campaign that was going on to sort of disarm uh, Americans. Mm-hmm. I can't remember what it's called, but I think it was done by Bloomberg out of New York. And, um, uh, you know, what did this do except sell more guns and sell more ammo? I really got to ask. I mean, it didn't get it didn't do anything but that. Um, so this is it. it and I'm not saying that the gun manufacturers had anything to do with it, but many of these gun organizations that are uh, purporting gun rights, it does benefit them when people are going after guns because, well, they get more money and more funding at the time. 855-450-3733. Free Talk Live, 855-450-FREE. Well, I did it. I finally left the empire behind. And now that I'm safely settled in Chile... I'm gathering with others like me to build a new community called Fort Galt. Fort Galt is designed to be the ideal home base for professionals and their families to live and work in peace. If you're ready to ditch the super state and bring your business to freer lands, visit us online at fortgalt.com. That's fortgalt.com. For over 20 years, you've trusted Lumber Liquidators to make high-quality, beautiful flooring affordable for everyone. Delivering this value means you get the floor you want at the low price you deserve. So we've lowered prices even more. This week, get stunning Espresso Hevea 3-quarter inch solid pre-finished hardwood for just $2.99 or natural strand bamboo for 41% less than our competitors and 18-month special financing. You trust our value, we value your trust. For quality hardwood, see the flooring experts. Visit LumberLiquidators.com to find a store near you. This alert just came in. This special announcement is for business owners and leaders of organizations who've been waiting for the right time to build. General Steel has made it impossible to wait any longer with rock-bottom prices that could save you thousands. That's right. General Steel, America's leader in pre-engineered structures, is offering buildings at prices you will never see again. Don't miss these prices. A 50 by 100 for $35,000. You heard right. That's 5,000 square feet for $35,000. Manufacturers, if you need a larger building, try a 100 by 100 commercial building for $129,000. You can't afford to rent with these prices. Imagine a 70 by 100 foot church building for under $69,000. With the economy improving and interest rates still at historic lows, you can't afford to wait. So call 866-91-STEEL. Lock in your price now. Call 866-91-STEEL. That's 866-917-8335. Who did you let down today? Your wife? Your kids? Well, how about yourself? Take a look in the mirror. If you're tired of your drug and alcohol problem, you need to fix the problem and right now before you hurt or kill yourself or worse yet, somebody else. Call the addiction specialist now at the Detox and Treatment Helpline 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you have private insurance, we specialize in finding you the right treatment. When you call right now, you'll speak to a recovering addict who understands what you're going through right now. Let us help you break your addiction to drug and alcohol before it's too late. This call is completely confidential and free. So if you have private insurance, take five minutes of your time. Call right now. I promise it'll change your life. 
Call right now, 800-208-5187. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. RATS is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. RATS was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. RATS is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download RATS free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. 855-450-3. 855-450-3. It's 855-450-3733. We might be able to squeeze you in in this final segment. Check out the AMP program. If you like what we do here on Free Talk Live, um, it's an important way that you can help us to reach more people with the ideas of liberty. We don't use the money from the AMP program for paychecks or anything like that. It all goes into advertising, marketing, and promoting Free Talk Live. And we bring the ideas of liberty to people out on the radio waves unlike any other uh, you know, practically any other program uh, on the planet. We are the largest uh, pro-liberty radio, truly pro-liberty radio program out there. And these ideas, they don't get out there too many other ways. So amp.freetalklive.com if you'd like to help support us and spread the ideas of liberty farther and wider. John said we were talking about... Sure. Let me. I'm going to just blow through the final two reasons here. Reasons for? Uh, the six things that drive techno panic. Techno panic. So the last two here, elitist attitudes. Academic skeptics and cultural critics often possess elitist attitudes about the technologies, platforms, or, or types of news media content that masses or young adopt before they do. These elitist views are often premised on the juvenoia and hyper-nostalgic thinking as described b- uh, before and above. So is this the idea that the internet wasn't going to make it? That kind of uh, sure, thought process? Sure, that kind of thing. Okay. Yep. Some researchers also have an incentive to perpetuate fear since a lot of research grabs attention and yeah. attracts more funding. Yeah, that's true. The last reason, uh, the last thing that drives techno panic is third-person effect hypothesis. When some people encounter perspectives or preferences that are at odds with their own, they are more likely to be concerned about the impact of those things on others throughout society and call upon government to do something to correct or counter those perspectives or preferences. Yeah. Psychologists refer Basically to this... Basically that everybody else is too dumb to handle yep. the information that was just given to you. Yep. Psychologists refer to this as the third-person effect hypothesis, and it explains many techno panics and resulting calls for government interven- intervention, especially as they relate to media policy and free speech issues. And essentially it's like, you know, people that don't allow other people to be free. Uh, well, that's uh, that's what it comes down to is freedom is the idea that you have to let other people be free. And uh, that can be it's it's a little frightening. Right. right. Um, I mean, it's it's a little crazy. The idea of other people carrying around guns, they can end your life, but they do it all the time. And right. somehow we have very few incidences of sort of licensed gun owners doing something. Let's go to David calling in from Florida. David, you're on Free Talk Live. What's on your mind? Yeah, guys, um, I just want to say. Thank you so very much because I've only been a listener of the show for the last year, maybe, because y'all came on WYO, and I used to listen to you at work on Saturdays. But I have the phone number, and um, sometimes I agree with you, sometimes I don't, and that's what you know freedom is about. Yep. And um, you know, there's been times I've listened to you on Saturdays, and I was like, I've wanted to put a nail through my left eye. <laughs> What what is it that bothers you most? 
Well, I mean, you know, there there's, you know, certain topics I agree about and then there's certain topics I don't agree yeah. about. My and, opinions uh, have changed throughout the years too, so, you know, I can yeah. I can and, see what and, it's like. I try not to be too hard on people, although it can be. Like once you get a you know, an inf- a piece of information becomes internalized for you, it's it's it can be so difficult to give other people an opportunity to grow around that. And I don't think that people really understand the freedoms in this country that were really given to us by somebody dying and for that liberty to be given to us. And, Let me ask you about that, because I often uh, think of, you know, the, the, the founding fathers and the revolutionary uh, soldiers die, fighting and dying for freedom. But what do you say to somebody who says, well, look at Canada. Canada's equally as free as the United States and freer in some ways right. and less free than others. And everything's fine I mean, over there. Yeah. They didn't have to fight a revolutionary war. Right, because uh, England didn't go to war with Canada. England went to war with the United States. Well, uh, the United States kind of went to war with with England too, you know. And um, you know, and the and the the uh, you know the object of war and everything, it's like they want to take this from us, and no, you cannot take this, and no, you're not going to tax us. So what are we going to do? We're going to fight you. To to to. You know, to to defend our freedom and stuff. We want freedom. Give me liberty or give me death. You know? Like I I get those things, but are you aware? Like Samuel Adams, for instance, the the guy the beer's named after. He went down, and I think it was Shays Rebellion in Connecticut. Um, and he basically told those guys, "Look, you can't have a rebellion. We, um, you know, you have self rule now." And so, you know, for him, what freedom was, was being ruled by a bunch of people nearby rather than by um, right. you know, a bunch of people across the water. Right. And why would somebody, you know, and this is what I've never understood about the Revolutionary War, is that why, why do people want to control somebody else? For what, for what reason? Well, to, because that's, you know, I, to, I think it's almost human nature. You know, and and we, you know, we went to war in there, and then the Civil War, and all that over slavery and stuff, and another even, fight over freedom, yep. Abra- and over it, and even Abraham Lincoln said, "Hey, I'm not, you know, I'm not going to uh, the slave states now. They can keep their slaves." Yep. And he never freed you know, a single then, slave. <laughs> yeah, and and you know the ones that were given freedom. You know, you can go north, and then um, yeah, I just I just don't know where the country is really going and everything. And people do not really know what liberty is truly about. The Constitution was drawn up in a uh, panic, more or less, mm-hmm. and stuff because of um, and then they kind you know the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, and stuff. But the Bill of Rights, you know, it, it, you know, take the black vote for instance, the right for women to vote. You know, what what kind of fight went on through there? There's a, well, certainly a lot yeah. of uh, contentious history over it. Right, and and what you know, and liberty in this nation, you know, the right to freedom, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And there's always somebody there that's going to try and take your pursuit of happiness. What makes you happy? You know, your right to do what you want to do, however you want to live. Yeah, I think that it doesn't uh, matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who you are and everything. If that's how you want to live and stuff. And I think a lot of the people in this country, you know, have have walked away from that. And they want the government to decide for them what they should do, who they should eat, what they should eat, what they should drink. You know, whatever makes you happy, you know, that's what you should make. That's what makes you happy. Nobody David, should tell me I'm obese. I really appreciate the call. Thank you so much. 855 450 free. I think that there's, you know, sort of a, I think David's right. I think there's a sort of mm-hmm. a general consensus in this country that we're not as free as we were once. Um, I don't know what it comes from necessarily because the facts, uh, you know, I mean, to some extent, I mean, you can show freedom in some areas like the the country's moving in, in that way. But I, I often wonder if it's the impressiveness of the sort of the debt, right? Like the, the government's so far in debt and people feel like they're, um, you know, just, we we could never possibly pay this off, um, and the the government acts so irresponsibly. 
And to me, that's what it seems like maybe it is. I don't feel like I have a voice in the government. Um, and I, I think that might be one of the reasons why so many people are leaving the country, too. They see uh, that they're being taxed. They feel like they don't have a voice. They feel like the government's uh, spinning out of control. And they don't know what to do about it. I don't know what to do about it. The best I've got is pick up your life and move to New Hampshire. Yeah. And, uh, you know, for me, it's been a really great choice. I think that you can find more liberty doing other things. But for me here in New Hampshire, you get, uh, you know, this this conversation of liberty. I hang out with activists a lot. Um, you know, there's there's a huge network. We're seeing progress uh, on from a sort of state government level. And, uh, you know, we've got a libertarian veto in the New Hampshire House. That doesn't exist anywhere else in the country. The New Hampshire Liberty Alliance endorses about a hundred different, uh, you know, legislators in the New Hampshire House. That means that no law can become law without. Well, I'm sorry. Most laws can't get the bipartisan support to jump over the libertarian veto. So your conservative law or your your conservative bill or your liberal bill must go through the um, the libertarian veto, and that means that many of them don't get through. Uh, you know, obviously, these uh, the folks that are libertarian, I'm using quotation marks here, <laughs> they're not 100% Lysander Spooner uh, libertarians, but they're, they would fit that on the Nolan chart, and they're rated by the New Hampshire Liberty Alliance that way. So for me, that's been the solution. I see hope where many do not. I didn't when I lived in Florida. That's how I felt. Yeah. You're certainly alone if you're outside of this community. Check us out in the meantime at freetalklive.com. If you want to sign up for the Free State Project, do it at freestateproject.org. I did it, and I don't regret it. freestateproject.org. Free Press Publications is an independent, alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary on the website fpp.cc, as well as a daily five-minute newscast, FPP Radio News, and weekly news, views, and commentary in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com, and the monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at FPP.cc. That's FPP.cc. As in Creative Commons. LRN.FM needs your help getting our satellite signal back on in Africa. Our satellite provider had us on at no charge from 2012 through February of this year when they pulled the channel off the air. Now we're trying to raise $22,000 to continue reaching people with the message of liberty in places where it's needed most. Please visit our Indiegogo fundraiser at africa.lrn.fm. Give what you can and share the link with your friends. africa.lrn.fm. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. The live edition of Flaming Freedom is next, after the news, here on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. From Keenan in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Thursday, April 2nd, 2015. Silver is trading at $16.75 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,201 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $248. 
Antiwar.com reports while their various allies across northern Syria have been all wiped out in attacks by both the Syrian military and rival rebel factions, the Free Syrian Army has claimed a major gain yesterday, capturing the Nasi border crossing on the border with Jordan. This was the only functioning border crossing between Syria and Jordan and has been under military control throughout the civil war. Jordan has announced this crossing is being closed. The U.S. has been training the Free Syrian Army and other rebels inside Jordan and then sending them in to fight in Syria, though this is the first significant gain they've had outside of an older, already closed crossing. The Nasib crossing lies on the Damascus Highway and was materially the last functional land route from Damascus to another country, with most other routes closed by the war. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Coinbase. Coinbase is a simple and secure online Bitcoin wallet for sending, receiving, and storing Bitcoin. I trust Coinbase. You should too. Get started at coinbase.fppradio.com. That's coinbase.fppradio.com. UPI reports a man in Gaza said he was tricked into selling a priceless mural by internationally renowned artist Banksy for $175. The mural was painted anonymously by the artist on the door left standing of a house destroyed by a bombing. The work, titled Bomb Damage, shows the Greek goddess Niobe mourning. In classical mythology, Niobe is often associated with bereaved mothers mourning the loss of her children. Rabi Darduna, the door's owner, was a Approached by local artist Bilal Khalid, who said he was purchasing the painted doors to put in a museum in Gaza. Darduna said, Then someone called Bilal Khalid called me on the phone. He said, We've painted seven paintings on seven doors, and I bought all of the doors except yours, and I paid 500 shekels for each. At first, I refused to sell it as I thought the door was worth more as it is heavy metal, and I asked for 1,000 shekels. Finally, we agreed on 700 shekels roughly $175. Darduna said Khalid insisted and made him sign a document saying he agreed to the price. He was hesitant but needed the money. Banksy murals have sold for hundreds of thousands of dollars. Darduna said, I did not know this was this valuable. I heard it can be sold for millions. Now I want my door back. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. Reuters reports Arkansas Governor Asa Hutchinson told lawmakers on Wednesday to revise a bill that rights activists and U.S. businesses say allows discrimination against gays and home state corporate giant 